Hi, my name is Matthew Warnick, and I'm excited to announce my candidacy for Greenup County Attorney. My wife, Stacy, my daughter, Chloe, and I are proud to call Greenup County our home. Growing up in Greenup County was an amazing experience and helped make me the man that I am today. I was lucky to grow up with great parents who taught me the importance of strong family values and honesty. After graduating from college and law school, I took my first job as an attorney in Louisville. It was a great experience, but I knew I wanted to return to Greenup County. I returned to practice law with my father, Frank Hill Warnick, at Warnick & Warnick. I wanted to continue the legacy started over 70 years ago by my grandfather, Frank Warnick. I've been practicing law right here at 221 Main Street in downtown Greenup for 20 years, while also serving as assistant county attorney for the last decade. I'm no stranger to the courtroom in Greenup County and throughout the region. I want to be part of the county leadership team to make positive changes for the people and future of Greenup County. I want to create an open door policy so that every citizen can have access to the county attorney's office when they need help. Every person should have their constitutional rights protected no matter what part of the county they're from or who they know. From Russell to South Shore, from Warnick to Worthington, and everywhere in between, I want to be your choice for Greenup County Attorney. Together, let's make Greenup County an even better place to call home. Credit unions are small and can't compete with us big banks. Who are you calling? Um, I'm just trying to get through your bank's automated system to talk to a real person. Well, two can play at this game. Oh, I, uh, I think I have the wrong number. At Member's Choice, we are small enough that a real person will answer your call. Well, we are a very large and very busy organization. But large enough that you will be able to access your money through our technology and our global network of ATMs. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. Our customers are like family, and you've made us one of the fastest growing Erie insurance agencies in Kentucky. And for those of you who haven't tried us, come find out what you're missing. Let us help you make the right call. Our adventures always start at Clark's Pump and Shop, your road trip headquarters. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Finals on the line as the 11 1 Raceland Rams welcome in the 12 0 Bishop Rossert Mustangs. Fifth all time meeting between the two as Raceland is 4 0 against the Mustangs. All four meetings have been in the playoffs. The first one happening back in 2015. That's the closest of the four. That was a 22-14 win by the Rams. In 2016, it was 47-21, and the Rams have hung 50-plus in the last two, 55-14 and 17, and 53-13, the final in 2018. And then when the district alignments changed due to the travel restrictions, the Rams and the Mustangs have not met since. Uh, so... This is the uh, the first time they've met this deep in the playoffs, and Raceland trying to, of course, punch its ticket into the semifinals 
and follow that same path that it did all the way to Kroger Field back in 2017. That was the year that it beat Ashland in Ashland, and the Rams are two games away from playing the carpet, but they got to take care of business tonight against a very powerful running team of the Mustangs. It all starts up front with that Rams front three tonight. Reese Winters, Chase Carell, Ben Taylor. They've got to be able to control the line of scrimmage, and then those four linebackers that have played superb all season long. Cole Conlon, Christian Wall, Xander Jenkins, Jackson Heighton. Conlon, 84 tackles, leads the way. 14 tackles for loss, seven sacks. That's ninth best in class single A. Ben Taylor with 10 sacks comes in at third in class single A in sacks per game. The Rams, as a whole, Rank, rank third in class single A in 29 total sacks on the season. And they have been uh, stingy at best with the fifth best scoring total that they've allowed at 12.3 per game. And they come out with a number two ranked scoring margin, 25.2, that they've outscored their opponents, averaging 37.6 per contest and only giving up just over 12. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk with head coach Mike Sammons, get his thoughts on tonight's matchup. We'll meet our starting lineups and get you ready for kickoff. The regional championship of the Mustangs and the Rams. It's coming at you right after this on the Countdown to Kickoff on the Cool It's My Town TV Sports Network. Race. At SOMC, it's happening. Now the SOMC Patient Portal app puts managing your health care right in your hands. You can request appointments with a simple touch of a screen, quickly and easily get a refill of your prescriptions, make online bill payments, direct message your SOMC provider, and even have safe and convenient virtual visits just about anywhere. The Patient Portal app at Southern Ohio Medical Center. Very good things are happening here. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Hey, this is Joel Dooley with Vanity Clean at the Tri-State. Is your basement wet? Do you have mold in your crawl space? Have you had a flood inside your home? Do you have asbestos in your ceiling tiles? Give us a call for a 24-7, 365 free inspection. 606-331-5001. It's not clean unless it's a Vanity Clean. Uh, you know this could be the final time you're going to play at this field, depending on what happens moving forward. So that adversity of, of knowing that this could be the last time you play at home, that's a big one. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're glad that we've earned the opportunity to be at home, and this is the next step on our process as we move along throughout the season. And, um, you know, you get November and the weather gets cold and it gets dark earlier, you know, the stakes get higher. And so uh, the stakes are a little higher tonight, and that's a great opportunity for us to uh, go out and play our best football and show the growth that we've had as a football team. And uh, I expect us, you know, to play at a high level tonight. Last week, a very physical battle again. Uh, nothing that you wouldn't expect anytime you see, put Raceland and Paintsville together in the playoffs, but uh, it was something you sustained 48 minutes and didn't really that adversity that first play of the game going for the going to the end zone again. It was something that the team was kind of like, okay, we've been here, done that. Let's keep keep, keep grinding and push forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had been there and done that. It's. Uh... I can tell you it's not how you script it, but it is what it is. And I've uh, done that two times in the last month. Uh, hopefully tonight's better than that. But, you know, on the back of our helmets, you walk in our locker room, first thing you see is it talks about keep pounding. And uh, we're going to swing that axe 48 minutes and see where – uh, see, see where it lies, lies. And so if you swing it enough, you get enough hits, enough battles, 
uh, that you're victorious in across those 48 minutes uh, at the end of the night, you're going to be happy with where you end up. So we just want to make sure that we're on time, that we keep being who we are, and uh, that we stay in the moment. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of times people get caught up and, um, you know, trying to make the moment bigger than it is or being the regional finals or what what be it. But at the end of the day, you got to line up and play this snap. And uh, when the snap is over, you got to line up and play the next one. That's who we are. That's who we've been all year. And that's who we'll continue to be in the, in the process. I know one of the things you talk about, especially when you get in this time of the season, those body blows. <clears throat> and there in the third and fourth quarter, there was a lot of body blows mm-hmm. to where a lot of guys from Paintsville, they were slow to get back up off the turf, and you could really see where you guys kind of imposed your will on, on Paintsville, especially there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's a 48-minute game, and those body blows are extremely effective. And, uh, uh, you know, you hit them high, you hit them low, you know, you hit them inside, you hit them outside, and uh, as time goes on, they become effective. And so I thought our guys have really bought into that bought into that thought process over the course of this season, the course of this journey, and uh, that's been part of who we are and where we've seen a lot of our growth. And that's punishment on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, a lot of times people feel like you just punish on offense, but, uh, you know, you play Class A football, you get a bunch of kids on the field on both sides. So we want to try to make sure we're punishing on both sides. And I thought, you know, we did a tremendous job of that last week. And in the end of the game, uh, you know, the results spoke for themselves. And so um, playing a team tonight that's, you know, got some weapons and also got a lot of two way players. So. Uh, again, a, a very big part of our game plan is the same thing that I try to punish and hit those body blows in uh, 48 minutes and see where it ends. There, you and I were talking just a few moments ago. There's been some games that Noah's not touched the ball a whole lot. Um, in the in the first round game against Fairview, he had one touch and a touchdown. But that paid dividends last week. He touches it 20 times. He has the most yard, rushing yards he has all season, but more importantly, four touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, Noah's, uh, Noah's a phenomenal, talented high school football player. I, I think his ceiling is unlimited. Um, you know, he's got the, the chance to, to dominate football games just like he did for seven days ago. Um, so, you know, we have kind of groomed him for that moment. And uh, there's three weeks left in high school football in Class A, and uh, we're going to try to ride him all the way to the end. But, uh, you know, he's worked hard. Uh, I'm very proud of who he's become, and uh, maybe more so than anything is how he's really studied and learned his responsibilities. Uh, you're talking about a kid who's playing you know, upwards of 100 snaps a game for us. We don't have a ton of two-way guys, but he is one of them. And so, um, you know, Noah was a workhorse for us last week. He was sometimes that he just simply refused to get tackled. And so he got in there behind that big offensive line and got his shoulder pads down and kept those feet churning. And, uh, you know, in November, you got to be able to run the football. I joke about that, but it's not really a joke. It's, it's what we believe. And, uh, so for us to survive tonight, we go build in the football. Last week, I noticed something with Logan that in the running game, it seemed like at the first part of the game, he was a little bit too fast. He was getting to the holes before they opened up. You could mm-hmm. see him in that second and third drive, really slowing down, letting the letting the blocks get out in front, being a little more patient. And that was kind of that growing process that he had to understand as well. Yeah, in the third quarter last week, when we kind of took control of the game, we had a score on the opening drive of the half, and then we score in the fourth quarter to kind of separate ourselves a little bit. But uh, just a little hyped up, a little anxious, a little, uh, you know, a little antsy, I guess, on the feet, kind of a big moment, big stage, uh, first time in that in that type of environment. Uh, but Logan's done a tremendous job leading our football team. And, uh, you know, I've said it before, I've said it again, we're going to ride and die with our guy back there, number seven, and our guys know that. I think he's got a lot of confidence in his guys. Again, the painful game last week, uh, once again, turned into one of those deals where they kind of went air raid on us, and we we kind of pounded it on them, and uh, I guess a lot of people would have probably maybe thought it'd be the other way around. It just didn't work out that way. So uh, whatever whatever we got to do to be successful, Logan's willing to do, and we'll have to throw it 20 times or run it 20 times, whatever it takes. And uh, So that'll be our approach tonight, whatever it takes. You look at your opponent tonight, and it's no secret they're going to run the football. That's what they do. That's what they're built on. And you, you kind of always joke and said you try to make your opponent play left-handed tonight. If you can get Brossard into the passing game, you feel like that you've got yourself pretty much separated and a chance to put this one away early. Yeah, heavy, heavy run team. I mean, quarterback, uh, tailback, both over 1,000 yards, uh, both in the upwards of – you know, 150 touches in 12 games. So they are uh, the majority, I'd say 95% of their offense. So and we got to be really good at the line of scrimmage, try to control the line of scrimmage. we could be able to tackle in space. Uh, both kids look elusive. Their quarterback looks like the, he really extends plays well with his feet. Um, so that's something that we really try to harp on this week, try to make sure we're good tacklers and we gang tackle and, uh, and we continue to run the ball uh, at a high pace. And so we we'll do all those type of things and not to really control the line of scrimmage. If we can get them in a situation where, uh, you know, they've got to throw the ball, you know, uh, on downs that they want to run the ball, uh, I feel like that would play to our advantage, uh, assuming we can get the quarterback on the ground with his feet. 
you look at a team like this that uh, you were, you and I were talking before the, the interview here, you said you counted eight players that they're going to play both ways tonight, and a lot of those are your skill positions. Mm -hmm. 48 minutes, that can really take a toll, especially if you can find a way to continue delivering those big punishing blows. How big is it, especially against a team like this that wants to ground and pound like this team wants to do? Yeah, I think it'll be a war of attrition in there who can kind of win enough of those battles uh, over the 48 minutes to win the final outcome. And uh, they're going to try to do the same. They're going to try to run the ball and body blow us, and we're going to line up and try to run the ball and body blow them. And uh, somebody's going to be able to run the ball, and somebody's going to be able to stop the ball and stop the run. So, um, you know, hopefully our guys can kind of continue to exert that uh, energy and exert that force that we've been able to play with over the course of the last three months. Uh, and really try to control the line of scrimmage and, and realize, you know, the game's not won in the first 10 seconds. We've learned that in the last, you know, two of the last four games. We've been behind after 10 seconds of action. So it's really buying into the 48-minute game, and our guys know that. And I think um, those moments, while not being ideal, have helped us grow. And so uh, hopefully tonight that's evident. Coach, appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. We'll talk to you after the game. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. We're back for starting lines. We continue as we continue here on Counting Out of Kickoff on the Coach My Town TV Sports Network. Come to Great American and see the world's hardest floors. Kelly Bamboo has a 50-year warranty and is four times as hard as oak. Whether it's kids playing indoors or boys just being boys. So come on down to Great American and see the hardest floors on earth. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great American. American. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Bones? Love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. I'm getting you ready for kickoff between Raceland and Bishop Brossard in the regional championship game. Let's meet our starting lineups. We'll start first with the Mustangs. Setting them down will be Thomas Sayers, 160-pound senior center. The guards, Caleb Lukes and Alec Rice. The tackles, Adam Bezold and Brad Rice. Average weight across the front for the Mustangs, if their roster is correct with their weights, is only 180 pounds. And I think that certainly plays in a, a kind of a key to the game tonight as we look at it. We'll talk about the other side for the Rams in just a moment. The quarterback, Jacob Light. 176 touches, 100 or 1,077 yards on the ground, 14 touchdowns. He's gone through the air for just under 500, but uh, about a 37% clip at 26 of 69. Six touchdowns, three interceptions. This team does not throw the football. Uh, they uh, He's averaging only 44 yards per game through the air, and that's just not something that they want to do. Number 10 in class single and rushing from the quarterback position. He's uh, accented by the tailback of Jed Martin. 202 touches, 1,272 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's uh, averaging 106 yards a game, number seven in class single A. Defensively for the Rams across the front, it's Reese Winters, Chase Correll, Ben Taylor, those front three averaging 220 uh, per person. The uh, linebackers, Coe Conlon, Christian Wall, Xander Jenkins, and Jackson Hyten. And the secondary will consist of Landon Newman, Noah Wallace, Connor Hughes, Parker Gallion in that back end. Offensively for the Rams, across the front, setting them down will be the 260-pound junior center of Drew Burke. The guards, Ben Taylor and Will Farley. The tackles are Clay Coldiron and Reese Winters. Logan Lundy, 6'3", 
foot three, 205 pound sophomore. 1,724 yards through the air, 21 touchdowns, six interceptions, averaging just over 143 yards a game. He's also rushed for 403 yards and nine touchdowns. Noel Wallace, last week a big game. His most rushing yards in a single game this season, his fourth 100-yard game of the year. He goes for 20 touches, 145 yards, four scores. He's now 80 or 90 yards excuse me, from 1,000 on the year. And you're going to have to dial back quite some time to find the last time that the Rams had a 1,000-yard rusher. But Mr. Wallace is very close. 12 touchdowns, averaging 76 a game. Jules Farrell is back in the rotation tonight. 95 carries, 410 yards, and five scores. Jackson Height and Isaac Browning also will be called upon. The four guys in the receiving core, Parker Gallion, Connor Hughes, Parker Fannin, and Landon Newman, all viable options for Lundy if he chooses to go through the air. Connor Hughes, number 18 in class single A with uh, 10 touchdowns of the 21 Lundy has thrown. He's also a threat with his legs. He's carried it 20 times, 167 yards in that touchdown down at Paintsville as he runs out of the Wildcat position. Defensively for the Mustangs across the front, Thomas Sayers, David Govan, Alex Rice, and Nathan Heck. The linebackers is Eli Tius, Caleb Lukes, and Austin Shadler. Also, Daniel Williams and Sam Willicky and Nathan Chalk. The uh, defensive backs, Ethan Orr, Jed Martin, Derek Martin, Luke Pisca Piscatello, and Jacob Light. Eight of the 11 guys on the field for the Mustangs are two-way players. How much will that play into account tonight in this 48-minute game of attrition? That's what we shall find out in about three minutes. Our final break is up when we return kickoff. The regional championship game, Raceland and Bishop Brossard, coming at you right after this on Countdown to Kickoff on the Quits My Town TV Sports Network. You know. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. Our customers are like family, and you've made us one of the fastest growing Erie insurance agencies in Kentucky. And for those of you who haven't tried us, come find out what you're missing. Let us help you make the right call. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. If a natural disaster shows up at your doorstep, you can't just turn it away. That's why it's important to prepare for emergencies before they show up. Go to ready.gov plan to find the tools and tips you need and make a plan today. Welcome to Ashland Credit Union. What brings you in today? I need help with getting my life in order. Okay, sure, I'd be happy to help. Just follow me. We believe that one part of your life you should always feel in control of is your finances. At Ashland Credit Union, we give you the tools to be in control. Bishop Brossard, as the Rams have won the coin toss, they have deferred to the second half. Tonight's game brought to you by Greenup County Commissioner and candidate for Greenup County Clerk Andrew Imel, who wishes the Rams the best of luck this football season. Go Rams from Andrew Imel and Greenup County Attorney Mike Wilson, always working hard for the people of Greenup County. All first downs tonight brought to you by Johnson's Chiropractic. Let Dr. Shannon Johnson take care of your back and muscle problems. Cool night? No, it's downright cold. 37 degrees, partly cloudy skies. A little bit of a east, brin, east breezy. Uh, four to six miles an hour that we see looking across at the flag across the way. It's uh, very, very still. So uh, nothing like what we saw a couple of weeks ago, and, and uh, that certainly plays into a fact if 
The Rams want to go to the air raid attack that we've seen here uh, several times. Fireworks show being put on over on the softball field. Lights on both ends. Rams in orange tonight. Orange tops, black bottoms. Black numerals outlined in white. The orange domes with the uh, Raceland R on both sides in the chrome. The chrome train tracks down the center of the helmet and on the back of the lid keep pounding. Brossard all in white tonight. White tops and bottoms. Green accents on the tops and the bottoms. Green numerals. And a Boston B on the side of the lids. Ready to go here tonight as Peyton Eisen gets ready to set this one up and send it deep. Sam Willicke is near side. Far side, it'll be Derek Martin as Eisen will be kicking from left to right as I view it here. That's the southeast end zone to the northwest end zone or from the softball field to the baseball field. Eisen's approach is in the air. Martin backpedals to the six-yard line. It takes a bounce, two bounces. It goes into the end zone for a touchback, and that's where the Rams will set up shop, or excuse me, the Mustangs will set up shop to start this ball game. So Jacob Light, Jed Martin will come out in the offense, first and ten. From their own 20. Ball right in between the hash marks on the brown uh, Bermuda grass here at Rams Stadium. So here comes Light and Martin in the backfield on an offset pistol look, a twin set. Corner edge is being set by the linebackers. They'll throw it on first down, and this ball is airmailed over top of the head of David Govan on the far sideline. Parker Gallion in the area for coverage, first and 10. Pass falls incomplete, brings up second down and 10. They air mailed it over top of a 6 5 guy. Same set this time as Martin will go into the left pocket of light from the gun. Play clock down to eight. Man goes in motion far side to near. Light keeps it himself, trying to come to the near side. Finds a, a slip of a hole that he dives forward to and picks up a couple, but it's going to be tough sledding from there. It's going to be third down and long. Give him a gain of three out to the 23. Make it third down and seven. Noah Wallace and Jackson Hyten in on the stop for the Rams. 11.30 to go here in the opening frame. Third down and seven. The Rams defensively this season have been stingy at best on third down. 20.9% of the time, 23 of 110. Near side hash mark and a twin set for Martin in the left pocket of Light from the gun. Rams showing blitz off the edge. Light drops back. Plenty of time. Now he's being flushed from the pocket. Rolling out right. Jenkins in pursuit. He airmails it down the far sideline looking for Govan. And he's out of bounds in front of his bench. It was Parker Gallion in coverage. And a quick three and out for the Mustangs. We'll give it to the Rams 53 seconds into this ball game. So Mason Meyer out for the punt. Meyer had a little bit of a slippage in pregame. He was warming up on the near sideline, and he went to put one skyward, and he – Met the back side of the turf. Landon Newman stands back at his own 43. Meyer, a high snap, gets it. A wobbly kick that takes it to the far sideline, bounces at the Mustangs 40, and then tumbles out of bounds just shy of the 45. So the Rams are going to get excellent field position. Let's see if they'll put it at the 44 or the 45 before we spot it there, but either way, the Rams are going to have great field position, 10.59 to go in the opening frame, and they'll have it at the Mustangs 45, a 22-yard punt, no return by the Rams. And here comes Logan Lundy, the offense. A short field to start things off here in this one. Lundy will start trips to the wide side right. Jules Farrell in in his back pocket. He'll bring it across the middle. That's Connor Hughes on the quick in route as he'll haul it in at the 32. He's down to the 30. A John, Jan, John, Johnson's chiropractic first down. 
Let's see where they took him down to. Looks like the 29-yard line. That's a gain of 16 on first down. Twin set now for Lundy from the gun. Lundy wants to throw on first down. Plenty of time. Steps in the pocket looking deep. And Connor Hughes was going toward the end zone. And he had contact there as looked like he was trying to release into the end zone and did not get a free release. It'll be an incomplete pass to bring up second down and 10. Luke Schroeder was back there that made the contact. Double barrel shotgun look this time with Wallace in the backfield for the first time with Farrell on second down. Ball comes out to the near sideline. The catch is made by Connor Hughes once again on the near side flat. Inside the 20, the 15, down to the 14-yard line. That's a gain of 15 and another Johnson's chiropractic first down. Now they'll put it at the 14-yard line. So a gain of 15 on the play. Two receivers left, one right. Lundy from the gun, keeps it himself, rolls off right side, makes a man miss, lowers the shoulder and dives across the five. He's inside the five down near the three. A gain of 11, it'll be first and goal for the Rams. Third first down on this series. Near side hash mark for the Rams. Ten minutes to go in the opening frame. Scoreless, but the Rams threatening as they're going to go on the eye formation here. Lundy crawls up under center. Turns, gives it off to Noah Wallace. Wallace makes contact, slips through the left side, and is he in? Is he is. Touchdown, Raceland. Noah Wallace goes in from three yards out, his 13th rushing touchdown of the season, and the Rams with very little trouble on that drive. They march it straight to the house for six, and they lead this one 6-0. Nine forty-three to go here in the opening frame. Pete Nyson out for the extra point. Connor Hughes will set it down. Ben Taylor will do the snapping. Ball is down. Kick is up. Splits the uprights, and it's 7-0 Raceland. Back for more after this on the Quits My Town TV Sports Network. Great hermanos Nunez has su- Credit unions are not real banks. <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions about credit unions when in fact there are credit unions for everyone. What makes us different from other banks is that our members have a voice and our profits come back to you. Return, refresh, refuel. Martin takes it at the 10, takes it up the far sideline, crosses the 20, the 25, and let's see where they will take him out to the 26. Five plays. 44 yards a minute, 16 off the clock. And Noah Wallace caps off the final three yards for his 13th touchdown of the season. And the Rams lead this one by a score of 6 or 7 nothing. excuse me. 9.39 to go in the opening frame. Second series for the Mustangs. Martin takes it right up the gut off the left side of the center, and he rolls out across the 30 on a gain of four. Far side hash mark. Martin and Light in the backfield. Two receivers 
three receivers now bound to the right, one left. Here's Light rolling out, pitches it out to his man near side. Nice open field tackle there by Landon Newman as he gets free and gets out and makes the stop. We'll see where they're going to take it. That will move the sticks for a Mustangs first down, their first of the ball game, as they'll take it out to the 37-yard line. That's a gain of seven. So make it first and ten. First first down of the ball game for the Mustangs. Near side hash mark, two receivers each way. Martin in the left pocket of light from the gun. On first down, they'll give it off to Martin. Martin rolls off right side, still churning as he gets out toward the 40, and then finally stood up there after a gain of three. Second down and seven. Brossard averaging just under 240 yards on the ground a game, 305 points this season, averaging a score of 25 to 5. They've had five shutouts against their opponents, but the uh, the Rams' defense made things tough on their first drive, and the offense just walked right down the field for 44 and got into the end zone. Twin set now, a pistol look now. Martin three yards deep of light from the gun. Play action, now they'll give it off to him. This time he's mad, and Christian Wall gets home off the edge. That's going to be dropped for a loss, and it's going to be third down and long once again. Uh, make that loss of three. So make it third and ten. Fourth play of the drive. 7.20 to go here in the opening frame. 7-0 Rams. Trips to the left, one right. Martin goes in the right pocket of Light from the gun now. Light takes it on third down. Three-step drop, surveying, looking across. Fires across the middle, and it's knocked down of the hands of Goran. As Connor Hughes swats it away at the 45, it'll be fourth down. Nice job there by Connor Hughes. He was giving up almost a foot on his defender and was able to swat that one away and bring out the punting unit again. So Mason Meyer will come out. And here comes Landon Newman dropping back to return. Now he's going to come back up. The Rams are going to guard here for a fake. So nobody back deep to return for the Rams. Let's we'll see if Meyer can get into one good one. High snap. He gets a good one over top of everybody, but it checks up on the Bermuda grass and comes to rest at the 34. 29-yard kick, no return. 6.57 to go in the opening frame. Rams in front, 7-0. And they get the football back here from their own 34-yard line. Now they've moved it up to the 36. Push the half-yard line. <laughs> Where is that button? Yes. So the Rams on their own 36 from the far side hash mark. Lundy's going to go on an open. Empty set, three receivers right, two left. Soft coverage on the edges. Four hats across the line for the Mustangs. Lundy comes across the near side, hits Connor Hughes in the seam. Hughes slips a tackle, breaks free, and he's off to the house. He's at the 20 with reservations for six. Touchdown, Raceland. 64 yards to the house, Connor Hughes. Rams in front, 13-0. Lundy tosses his 22nd of the year. That's number 11 for Connor Hughes. Connor Hughes pinballing through the middle of the field, and he was untouched when he left the 50. Peyton Eisen for the extra point. It's up. That one's blocked off the left side. No good. 13-0. Rams in front. Back up to this on the Quits My Town TV Sports Network. What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester Steak, Seafood, and Bourbon Bar. All flavor and no fuss. 
At Members' Choice Credit Union, we're here to work with you, not sell you a service. Uh, why not just give them a pamphlet? We would much rather sit down with you and help you achieve your financial goals. At Members' Choice Credit Union, you're a name, not a number. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jay's make it easy. Smoke and Jay's Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky. 64 yards to the house, and the Rams lead this one 13 to nothing. As here's the punt or the kickoff, excuse me, fielded back at the 25, and the Mustangs with a nice return as Willicky. Gets into the center of the field across the 35 to the 36. But the Mustangs find themselves in a sizable hole that they have certainly not faced this year early on. So from their own 36, Here comes the offense out. East Carter leads Mason County 14 to nothing, 8.50 to go in the first over in Grayson. Here's a handoff, Martin. Martin tries to go off right guard, and he runs into a wall of orange jerseys and finally gets shoved to his backside. And let's see if they're going to say it's no gain or any loss whatsoever. No gain on the play. We get second out and 10. Raceland right now outgaining Bishop Brosser at 109 to 14. Second down and 10. Clock resting 559 as it starts to roll here in the first frame. Light wants to throw. Pressure coming up the center. He'll roll it out to the near sideline. Wants to throw it deep. A wounded duck. And Landon Newman goes in and knocks it away at the 30. He had Mason Meyer down the sideline next to the Rams bench. And Newman swats it away. Newman! It'll be third down and 10. That was a great read by Light to use his feet to evade the, the blitz coming up the middle. And that was something I was talking with Coach Sammons in the pregame show. He said that this kid cannot beat them with his feet. That's what they had to make sure he did not do. Uh, we were talking about a comparable quarterback that they had seen that really reminded what this kid did. And the first one that came to both of our minds was Chase Mims out of Betsy Lane. Very tall, athletic kid that could throw it a little better but could also beat you with his legs. Here's third down and ten. He's rolling out to the right, and he is going to be stonewalled as coming out and getting him as that's big Ben Taylor. That'll be his 11th sack of the season. He's number three in class single A as Ben Taylor gets home for a big loss as that's going to be inside the 30 back to the 27-yard line on a loss of nine. So in their first three possessions tonight, Bishop Brossard has a net of five yards. And the go three and out again. Newman stands on his own 40. Meyer to punt it away. Low snap this time. He fields it. A low line drive that takes a bounce into Raceland territory. Newman thinks about scooping it up around the 35. He'll let it roll, and it'll tumble across to the 33. So a 40-yard punt, no return. 4.53 to play opening frame. And the Rams leading 13-0 will take over. Double barrel shotgun look this time. Lundy with Farrell and Wallace. The snap, they give it off to Farrell. Farrell stretching it out to the left side, still finding a hole. Now finally cuts... Up. Upfield and a penalty marker flies from the far sideline. That one's probably coming back. So, 
Never could find a seam to cut up field. And we'll check in with our official tonight, Brian Napier. They'll get that one on Clay Coldiron, left guard, or left tackle, excuse me. So first penalty of the ball game goes against the Rams. And I believe it's going to be they'll go back at to the 23. So a 10-yard penalty. Yeah, first and 20 from the 23 now. Twin set for Lundy from the gun. Lundy takes, gives it off to Farrell. Farrell with a head of steam right up the gut. He goes off the left side across the 30. He'll get out to the 33. He'll pick up the, the penalty marker yardage as he takes his first carry of the ball game. Make it gain of 10. Makes it second down and 10. Rams break the huddle. About 17 on the play clock. They'll put a receiver to the left, an H back of Farrell and Wallace in the left pocket of Lundy from the gun. They'll give it off to Wallace. Wallace comes off to the right edge, and he runs into a wall of white jerseys. Ball comes out. They're going to say the ball was down as Jacob Light had picked it up, but um, instead, It'll be only a gain of a yard by Noah Wallace and make it third down and nine. Inside of four minutes to play here in the first quarter, 13-0 Rams. Twin set for Lundy from the gun. Right between the hashes, Lundy takes a look to the sideline, gets the call, play clock down to seven. They're going to have to hurry up. Or it looks like Mike Sam is going to burn a timeout. And that's what he will do. Back in 60 seconds on the Kowitz My Town TV Sports Network. At SOMC, it's happening. Now our patient portal app lets you request appointments, get prescription refills, make online payments, and have safe and convenient virtual visits just about anywhere. SOMC, very good things are happening here. Hey, this is Joel Dooley with Vanity Clean of the Tri-State. Is your basement wet? Do you have mold in your crawl space? Have you had a flood inside your home? Do you have asbestos in your ceiling tiles? Give us a call for a 24-7, 365 free inspection. 606-331-5001. It's not clean unless it's a Vanity Clean. Come to Great American and see the world's hardest floors. Kelly Bamboo has a 50-year warranty and is four times as hard as oak. Whether it's kids playing indoors or boys just being boys. So come on down to Great American and see the hardest floors on earth. Great pricing. Great service. Great, Great American. American. Hey, Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. Rams leading Bishop Brossard here as 3.20 to go in the first frame. And the Rams will face third down and nine from their own 34. Rams on third downs this season, 38.6%, 44 of 114. And they're going to go five wide to the wide side of the field on the right side. Lundy in an empty set. Four hats across the line up for the Mustangs. They'll bring it near sideline. They've got their man there. That's Landon Newman. Newman makes the grab near sideline, crosses the 45. He's out near midfield. Move the sticks. Another Johnson's chiropractic first down. Let's see if he takes him to the 47 or the 48. They'll take him out to the 48. That's a gain of 14 through the air. 3-10 to go first quarter. Rams moving with the football. That's their fifth first down of the ball game. Lundy a double barrel shotgun look near side hash mark. The snap on a little counter play. Noah Wallace right up the gut. He goes. He's into Mustangs territory, and he gets tripped up after crossing the Stangs 44. That looked like it had six written on it, but instead it's a gain of eight. Make it second down and two. Near side hash mark. Newman and Fannin to the far side, the wide side left. Lundy from the gun. Play action, pumps, wants to go for a home run ball to Connor Hughes. Hughes gets behind his man and holds it in, but he runs out of bounds inside the 10. What a beautiful pump there by Logan Lundy, and Connor Hughes just ran past the man in coverage as that was Derek Martin trying to swat it away. It'll be first and goal for the Rams. Lundy 
They'll take it down to the seven. That's a gain of 37. So first and goal for the Rams. Second, Johnson's chiropractic first down on this drive. Browning in the right pocket of Lundy. Wallace, or Farrell, excuse me, takes the handoff from the left side, tries to bounce it to the right edge. He dies for the pylon. Is he in? He's in for six. Touchdown, Rams. Jules Farrell, sixth touchdown of the season. He goes in from seven yards out. Rams have now put 19 on the board. That's the most the Mustangs have given up in a single game all season. We've got 2.15 to play in the first quarter. So the extra point attempt for Peyton Eisen. As he lines it up, Connor Hughes will set it down. Snap is back, kick is up, and that one is wide left, no good. So 19 nothing Rams, back for more after this on the Coach My Town TV Sports Network. You know Welcome to Ashland Credit Union. What brings you in today? I need help with getting my life in order. Okay, sure. I'd be happy to help. We believe that one part of your life you should always feel in control of is your finances. At Ashland Credit Union, we give you the tools to be in control. Come to Great American and see the world's hardest floors. Kelly Bamboo has a 50-year warranty and is four times as hard as oak. Whether it's kids playing indoors or boys just being boys. So come on down to Great American and see the hardest floors on earth. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great American. American. Hey Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. Rams taking a 19-0 lead, six plays, 67 yards. And Jules Farrell goes in for the touchdown to put the Rams up 19-0. Here's a kickoff return from the 15 as Martin gets free across the 30. So Brossert will take it out to the, looks like the 37 yard line. Can I get a 39? No. <laughs> It's like we're in an auction in here all of a sudden. So their best starting field position with 2.10 to go here in the opening frame. Light keeps it himself, rolls off left guard, and spun across the 40. And Xander Jenkins and Jackson Heighton in on the stop out to the 44 gain of seven. Rams have been stingy at best on a team that was very stingy defensively coming in with the numbers. Rams have already surpassed a lot of those here in the first quarter. Twin set, like from the gun. Martin in their left pocket. They'll give it to Martin. Martin a little stutter step as he bounces it to the outside, finds a seam. Spins still on his feet as he crosses into Rams territory. Still rumbling and stumbling as he crossed the 35, the 30. And a big run there by Jed Martin. As that'll pick up the first down as he'll take it deep into Raceland territory all the way down to the 28 on a gain of 28. So a little bit of life coming together for the Stangs here down 19. Most points they had given up this season was back in the week before the, the postseason started. That was 14 at Pendleton County. Play clock is at zero. Nobody's throwing a flag. Light keeps it himself, rolls off of right center, and Ben Taylor stands up. The play clock was at zero for about three seconds. So Light takes it. 
They'll push him down to the 27, a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. Play clock can expire if they didn't want to, and it looks like Brossard's going to take this one to the second quarter. It'll be second down and nine when we return. 19-0, Rams in front of Bishop Brossard. Back after this on the Coyotes MyTown TV Sports Network. Credit unions are not real banks. <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions about credit unions when in fact there are credit unions for everyone. What makes us different from other banks is that our members have a voice and our profits come back to you. Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Nineteen nothing. Rams in front of Bishop Brossard here in the region final round of the KHSAA State Playoffs. James Carr, happy to have you along with us here tonight. Another game across the way over in Grayson has East Carter in front of Mason County, 22-7. Still a little bit of time left to go in the first quarter in that one. So second down to nine for the Rams, 27. Light rolls it out to the left, makes the pitch to Martin. Martin finds a seam off the left edge, and he is shoved out of bounds. Penalty marker flies, and let's see what we get at the end. This may negate a very nice carry there. It was a beautiful pitch there as Light read it well. And it's going to be against Raceland. So it looks like it's going to go a five-yard face mask. They called it on 42. Rams don't have a 42. Closest thing they've got is Andrew Jenkins, maybe a 52. So, quickly they go. They'll give it off to Martin. So Martin with a gain of one, second down and nine for the Mustangs. Actually make it second and goal, excuse me. Now they're going to a power eye. They'll give it off to, no, Light keeps it himself, rolls out to the left side, still fighting for yardage, and he has stood up there. Jackson Height and Ben Taylor and Noah Wallace in on the stop. Let's see where they take him down. Looks like it's a seven, so a gain of two. It'll be third and goal. 10.55 to go here in the opening half. 19-0 Rams in front. Brossard on the evening, 0 for 3 on third down conversions. Raceland defensively has allowed those only 21% of the time. Far side hash mark as the Mustangs rush up quickly in a power eye. Light wants to throw, surveying, coming near sideline, now throws it to the back corner, and he's got a man wide open on a beautiful read, and they get it in to Jet Martin as he takes it in for the touchdown. That was a nice play there by Light as he eluded everybody right and allowed Martin to slip out the backside for the six, and with 10.25 to go in the first half, the Mustangs are on the board. Andrew Schwartz out for the... Extra point attempt. Twenty-two of twenty-seven on extra point attempts this season. Snap is back. A high snap. Kick is up and is good. And it's nineteen to seven. Back after this on the Coyotes My Town TV Sports Network. Better 
Senior Banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Bishop Brossard has gone for a onside kick attempt, and now they got to pull this one apart and see who comes away with the ball, and the Br Mustangs recover it. So the Mustangs will take over at the Rams 44. And... What a... Uh, what a change of events so quickly. So they'll have it first and 10 from the 44. So they'll have the Rams. Light rolls it off to the right side, searches for a hole, now cuts downfield and gets slammed to the brown turf at the 40 on a gain of four. Second down and six. That last drive, seven plays, 63 yards, three minutes, 50 seconds off the clock. And the Mustangs, who had been kind of stonewalled out of the gate, now found a little bit of momentum, and the onside kick was executed perfectly. Twin set for light from the gun. Martin in his left pocket. Play clock down to four. Light rolling off the left side, trying to bounce it to the outside edge, and Ben Taylor wraps him up as he dives forward across the 40 to the 39. It'll be third down and five. Nine seventeen to play in the opening half. 19 to seven Rams. Let's see if the Mustangs trust their feet. And again, at this situation, is this four down territory? Certainly don't want to hand it back to Raceland on a shorter field. But uh, they've got some work to do here on a third down and five. Far side hash mark. Rams with three hats across the line. Pressure coming off the edge. Light dropping back, and that ball is knocked to the ground by Jed Martin. Very smartly that he knocked it down. A penalty markers on the field all the way back at the 39. And they're going to get a pass or a roughing the passer call on the Rams. They'll get that one on Jackson Heighton. So the Boo Birds will rain out here. So 15 yards on the personal foul. So move it up to the 24 yard line and a first down for the. Mustangs. So now the Rams total on the penalty side, three for 30. Coming into the game, averaging only 48-4 per night. And they've had some big ones. The Mustangs have yet to have a penalty marker thrown against them. So now what appeared to be a nice stop on third down now is a first and ten. Light gives it off to Martin. Martin starts left, comes back right, and he runs into the arms of Reese Winters, who drops him back for a loss of a yard. Eight and a half to go in the first half. Rams in front, 19 to seven, but the Mustangs taking advantage of a Rams miscue with a 15 yard personal foul on roughing the passer. But Reese Winters with a nice stop on first down makes it second and 11. Fifth play of the drive. Trips left, one right. Ball centered toward the far side hash mark. And now the penalty marker finally flies on a delay of game. 
So we'll get a first delay of game officially in the ball game. So their first flag assessed against the Mustangs. Backs it up, five more. It makes it second and 16. Raceland has had the football for only three minutes and 54 seconds in this ball game, but they've put up 19 points in the contest. And the defense have got to stand tall here, holding on to a 19-7 lead. Same set for Light from the gun. Three-step drop, surveying. Pressure coming off the left edge. Now he's going to run. Ben Taylor's chasing him down. He lofts it toward the back of the end zone and throws it deep, incomplete. It was intended for David Govan. It'll be third down and 16. Clock resting, 7.27 to go in the opening half. Into the first, East Carter leads Mason County 22-10 out in Grayson. 19-17 our score here, 7.27 on arrested clock. Ball at the Rams, 30. They're going to have to hustle. Play clock's at four. They're not going to get everybody set and... Paul Wiggins is going to have to burn a timeout on the far sideline. We'll go ahead and keep it right here. Timeout. Wiggins in his eighth season with the Mustangs, the same tenure as Mike Sammons. Sammons started back in 2014, and his record his first year there was 11-3. The Rams with their 11 wins mark only the fifth time in program history that they've won that. A win here tonight would match the program season high of 2008 of 12 wins, and then, of course, a win here tonight and a win next week would push the Rams back to the carpet at Kroger Field that first Friday in December. Sammons comes in with a record of 71 and 31, 16 and 7 in postseason play, both of those at a 69% clip. And his eighth season here, it's his best winning percentage that he's had. Fifth time that he's had double digit winning wins in a season, and again here trying to push this to the most he's ever had in his tenure with the Rams. Third and 16 out of the timeout for the Mustangs. Trips left, one right. Light from the gun, Martin in his right pocket. Pressure coming off the edge, Light steps up in the pocket, air mails it off to the far sideline, and that ball is tipped and knocked away. Landon Newman swats it away, they were going for the big man of Govan. Pass falls incomplete and brings up fourth down. We get a penalty marker against Bishop Brossard, and I believe this is going to be a hold. This will be de declined, I believe. Mike Sammons is asking what they're going to do as Brian Napier comes over to have a conversation with. Our umpire tonight is Justin Bates. The lineman is William Fugit. Line judge is Derek Wright. Side judge, J.J. Wright. And the field judge is Christy Combs. So Brian Napier checks in with Mike Sammons, and... They're going to decline the penalty and take the play. Yeah. So fourth and 16, 721 on arrested clock here, and the offense stays on the field for the Mustangs. Light drops back, pressure coming off the edge, throws it deep off the far sideline again, and Newman swats it away, trying to go to Govan once again. The Rams hold on fourth down. It'll be a turnover on downs, and they'll take over on their own 30. Landon Newman with his fourth pass defended in this ball game, and the Rams take over from the 30-yard line with 7.14 to go in the opening half. Stay tuned with us at the half, the Monroe Collision Center's halftime show for all your body work needs at quality prices and prices you can afford. See the good folks at Monroe Collision Center's of the Tri-State. Lundy from the gun on first down, gives it off to Browning. Browning trying to bounce it to the outside edge, finally finds the edge, and then is bounced out of bounds into his own bench as Jed Martin finished it off. It was Govan that was sealing the edge to keep Browning from not getting there. Mike Sammons just turned and looked at the sophomore and said, it's north and south, not east and west, my man. Get it up the field. So a loss of one on the play. 
Brings up second down and 11. Two receivers right, one left. Lundy gives this one off to his tailback of Farrell. Farrell co goes right, comes back left, and lost his footing after crossing the 30 to the 31. It'll be third down and long. Take it out to the 32, a gain of three. It'll be third down and eight. 6.48 to go in the opening half. Rams in front, 19 to seven. This is the quarter the Rams have scored the most points this season of their total. 160, that's 35.5% of their points scored in this frame. They've yet to find the scoreboard after dropping 19 in the first. Trips right, one left for Lundy on third down and eight. Lundy pumps, surveys across the middle of the field. Now he's flushed from the pocket, takes it to the far sideline, had his man there, and he dropped it. That was Jules Farrell on the far sideline who had slipped free, and he can't haul it in, and it'll be fourth down. Clock resting 6.20, and... Noah Wallace out for the punt. 22 punts this season, averaging 34.8. And back to return is Mason Meyer. He'll stand on his own 38-yard line. Let's see if Wallace can get into a good one here. High snap. Wallace gets it. It's a knuckleball that comes near sideline. It takes a Rams bounce. Meyer has to back away as it tumbles across the 30 and comes to rest around the 27. So nice kick there by Noah Wallace as he'll flip the field. And let's see where they're going to place the football, either at the 26 or the 27-yard line. They're going to put it at the 27-yard line, so a 41-yard punt, no return. 6-11 to go in the opening half. Rams in front, 19-7. So Light is going to go in an I formation now as even Orthos goes as the fullback. Two tight ends. They'll give it off to Martin. Martin rolls off left center, and he's into a wall of orange jerseys. Maybe a gain of a yard. Actually, they'll give him a gain of three out to the 30. That's a nice spot. <laughs> wow. Wow. So make it second down and seven. Mustangs stay in the I formation. A tight end on each side. Light rolling out left. Throws it that way. Has his man there that makes the grab. As Austin Shadler makes the grab. As that'll take it out to the Rams, or the Mustangs 40, excuse me, on a gain of 10, first and 10. Sixth first down of the ball game for the Mustangs. Far side hash mark, light back from the gun, two receivers right, two left. Rams three hats across the line, they send the pressure up the middle, and Martin... Makes a man miss, spins at midfield, and tumbles into the Rams' side of the territory. And another first down for the Mustangs. They'll take him down to the 47. That's a gain of 13. Five minutes to go before halftime. Rams in front, 19-7, to but the Mustangs trying to find an answer. Twin set. Light from the gun. Martin in the right pocket. Light wants to throw on first down, pumps, now rolls out, now looks left, still surveying across the field, pressure coming. He makes a man miss, and then finally gets stonewalled out of bounds as there's two orange jerseys on top of him. Xander Jenkins is one of those. The other one is Reese Winters, and the Studebaker horn is broken. That's going to be a loss of three. And the Studebaker horn, finally somebody got their foot off of it or got the uh, crow out of it that got stuck inside. Second and 13, four and a half to go in the half. Trips boundary left, wide right is 
Mayer, light from the gun, keeps it himself, tries to come off the right edge, and he runs into the wall of orange jerseys again. Wallen Jenkins in on the stop for the sack. As they'll take it back to the 48, a loss of two. So make it third and 15 at the Brossard 48-yard line. Four minutes to go before halftime. The Rams would like a stop here and a chance to get the football back, and they get the football to start the second half. Brossard two of six on third down conversions this, this evening. Rams showing blitz at the front. Here they come off the edge. Light fires a bullet across the middle, and he's got his man there at the Rams 40-yard line. As the connection's out to Sam Willicke, and that'll move, no, won't move the sticks. It's going to set up a very manageable fourth down on a gain of 12, though. So make it fourth down and three. And Brossard 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions in this game. The Rams stood tall on the last opportunity. Raceland has allowed only 28% of fourth down conversions to be converted this season, 11 of 39. Mustangs rush to the line quickly. Play clock down to seven. They're going to power eye now. Now they've got you in a full house. Light wants to throw. Pressure coming off the edge. Light scrambling for his life, trying to roll out, and then throws it to the near sideline, and the ball is incomplete, or is it caught? It is caught, but it's going to be short as Martin will make the reception, but it'll be a turnover on downs on a loss of two back to the 42. So the Rams' defense holds tall again. And three minutes and a second to go in the half of the Rams get the football back from their own 42-yard line. Raceland has two timeouts as well. And this is going to be the Rams' best starting field position from their own 42. Browning and Farrell from the gun. Here's Browning, works off left tackle as Govan reaches in and makes the stop. Browning out to the 47-yard line on a gain of five. Browning stays in the right pocket now. Trips right, one left. Lundy from the gun on second down. No, let's check that. That's Connor Hughes. Now they throw it to Lundy. Lundy throws a bullet across the middle, and that ball was nearly caught, but when it was tipped and knocked away, as they went with a little trickery, Landon Newman was the man going for the catch, and Brossard has a man down. That's Mayer. As he came out with the worst of the collision there with Newman. Injury timeout back in 60 seconds on the cool. It's My Town TV Sports Network. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student-athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student-athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, Meyer comes to his feet and is off to the field on his own accord. Rams were flagged for a, an illegal shift, so it'll make it second down and 10. Double barrel shotgun now for Lundy. He'll give it off to Wallace. Wallace bounces it out to the outside. He's got a seam. He's got first down yardage and more as he gets into Mustangs territory. Down across the 45. Let's see where they're going to put him down to the 44. It's a gain of 14 on the play. Another Johnson chiropractic first down. Ninth first down of the ball game for the Rams. 2.13 to go in the half. Trips left, one right. 
Farrell in the left pocket now of Lundy. Lundy keeps it himself, follows Farrell as he'll go right up the gut, still driving the pile forward down to the 41, a gain of three. Rams get the football to start the second half. And how big points would be right here after they put up 19 quickly. And they've been held scoreless since. 19 to 7 are scores. We approach 90 seconds to go in the opening half. Lundy on second down. Wants to throw. Looks to the far sideline. He's got his man there. Connor Hughes in the far side flat. Hughes makes the grab inside the 35. Spins inside and picks up a couple more. Take him down to the 31. That's a gain of 10. And another Johnson chiropractic first down. That's what you said, Bill. I don't know what his name is. Billy Bob, Jimmy Bob, anything. First of 10 Rams from the 31. Lundy gives it off to his tailback as Farrell goes right up the gut across the 25. Take him down to the 24. That's a gain of seven. 60 seconds to go in the opening half. Rams knocking on the red zone door, or as Coach Samuels likes to call it, the orange zone. Twin set for Lundy again. Lundy wants to throw. Looking left. Going for it. Oh, he's got his man, Noel Wallace, wide open in the end zone for a touch. Down number 23 on the season. Noah Wallace got in behind the defense and gets into the house. Rams with a big answer. They lead it 25 to 7 with 43 seconds to go before the break. That's Noah Wallace's first receiving touchdown of the season. So 25 to 7, and the Rams appear to be going for two here. They'll go with an H back of Farrell. Wallace in the left pocket of Lundy from the gun. Two receivers left, one right. Lundy pumps, brings it near sideline. No, that's out to Newman, and Newman! Newman gives it to Farrell on the pitch for the two-point conversion. I don't even have any way to put that one in. That's trickery at its best. 27 to 7. We're back after this on the Coyotes My Town TV Sports Network. What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester Steak, Seafood, and Bourbon Bar. All flavor and no fuss. At Members Choice Credit Union, we're here to work with you, not sell you a service. Uh, why not just give them a pamphlet? We would much rather sit down with you and help you achieve your financial goals. At Members Choice Credit Union, you're a name, not a number. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jay's make it easy. Smoke and Jay's Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky. Six plays, 58 yards, two minutes, 18 seconds off the clock. Landon Newman, or check that, Logan Lundy throws to Noah Wallace for the touchdown. Then the two-point conversion goes to Newman, and he pitches it out to Farrow. And he goes into the end zone for the two-point conversion and a 27-7 lead. So the kickoff, a little pooch kick, is fair caught at the 35. So the Mustangs will have 42 seconds to go before halftime. They have two timeouts remaining. But they trail this one 27-7. And they're going to have to go in a hurry here. Got him. my right needs a Snickers. He's a little angry tonight. Here's Light. Pressure coming off the edge. Steps up in the pocket and then escapes off the left side. He's going to run it himself across the 40, the 45, and then is finally pushed out of bounds by Jackson Heighton as he shoves him into the Mustangs bench. But that will move the sticks for a Mustangs first down out to the 47-yard line on a gain of 12. But... 12 seconds goes off the clock. 
and the clock stops as he got out of bounds. So the eighth first down for the Mustangs. But they've had the football a ton here in the first half. Nearly over 16 minutes and counting. But they've only got seven points to show for it. Light from the gun on first down. Pressure coming off the edge. Goes back left. Starts to throw. Throws a wounded duck into the center of the field. Ball is tipped and knocked away. But coming away with it is Sam Willicky. Did he catch it? He did. Down to the 20. So Willicky catches the wounded duck. It'll be a gain of 33. And a timeout, Bishop Brossert. So 21 seconds to go. Now, Brossard has not attempted a field goal this season. Schwartz has gone 22 of 27 on PAT attempts. Looks like he's got plenty of uh, leg off of the block when he goes for the PAT. So at this point right here, it's a 37-yard field goal attempt with no wind. But 21 seconds to, uh, to play and the ninth first down of the ball game have the Mustangs inside the red zone, or right at the red zone, I should say. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Greenup County Commissioner Andrew Imel, also candidate for Greenup County Clerk, who wishes the Rams best of luck this football season, saying go Rams from Andrew Imel. And Greenup County Attorney Mike Wilson, always working hard for the people of Greenup County. The Moreau Collision Center's halftime show coming up. We'll check all the scores and stats from this one, scores from around the area. And we'll get you ready for the second half of action here on a cold night at Ram Stadium. Trips left, one right for Light from the gun. Martin in his left, in his right pocket. The low snap, Light rolling out, pressure coming off the edge, and he gets home. That's Jules Farrell coming in for his third sack of the season as he takes him all the way down to the thirty. Farrell came untouched off the edge, and that time Light could not get free as that'll be a loss of 10 and another timeout as the Rams defensively have gotten after the Mustangs as credit that one to Jules Farrow and when Farrell comes off the edge, it was with a head of steam. That's the fourth sack of the night for the Rams. They had 29 coming into the game. That's third best in Class AAA. And the most important thing is it certainly pushes the Mustangs well out of field goal range at this moment. So from the Rams 30, seven seconds to go. Nah, I don't know. It's the clock should not be running. No, he's it. He's not watching the, there. No. there we go. The, so now we got 12.7 seconds to go in the half. Raceland is playing center field legitimately. They've got five guys deep. They'll send two guys off the edge. Light steps up in the pocket, throws it far sideline, going toward Govan, and that one swatted away, nearly picked off. As it was Newman knocking it away again, Connor Hughes was there nearly making the interception. 5.7 seconds to go in the half. It'll be third down and long. Third down and a $20 Uber ride for the Mustangs. Uber. Maybe a lift. No cab rides anymore. That used to be a cool thing. You've not lived until you've take a, taken a cab ride in New York City. No, I would never do that. I only go through New York City if I'm on a subway, an airplane, or walking. I will not drive in that city. That is insane. Here we go. Third down and 20. Three receivers right, one left. Light wants to throw penalty marker. Flies. Flush from the pocket. Rolling out right. Christian Wall brings him to the right. He throws it away. Hit from behind as he throws it up. And it's swatted to the ground by Noah Wallace. Play clock, or the game clock is at zeros. But we may have an untimed down. No, they're going to get an illegal shift on Brossert. So that'll take us to the end of the half. 
with the Rams in front, 27-7. Halftime show presented by Moroccan Legion Centers up after this on the Coits My Town TV Sports Network. Hey, Rams fans. At SOMC, it's happening. Now the SOMC Patient Portal app puts managing your health care right in your hands. You can request appointments with a simple touch of a screen, quickly and easily get a refill of your prescriptions, make online bill payments, direct message your SOMC provider, and even have safe and convenient virtual visits just about anywhere. The Patient Portal app at Southern Ohio Medical Center. Very good things are happening here. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. this summer with a case of Clark's Water. Clark's Weapon Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Hey, this is Joel Dooley with Vanic Clean of the Tri-State. Is your basement wet? Do you have mold in your crawl space? Have you had a flood inside your home? Do you have asbestos in your ceiling tile? Give us a call for 24-7, 365 free inspection. 606-331-5001. It's not clean unless it's a Vanic Clean. First half, we welcome you into the Moroccan Legion Center's halftime show. 27-7, Raceland in front of the visiting Bishop Brossard Mustangs. To put it in perspective of what Raceland has done to the Mustangs in the first half, Brossard coming in had allowed 54 points all season long through 12 games. Raceland has managed to put up half those numbers in 24 minutes. What plays out in the second half still yet to play. A quick score of interest down at Hambly. Pikeville in front of Williamsburg, 28-14 at the half. And that game obviously has a lot of implication of what happens next week. The Rams, a win here tonight, will depend on what happens in front of them. The Rams, number three in RPI ranking. They've got Russellville playing Newport Central Catholic. A win by that would secure, no, unless Pikeville loses, would secure Raceland's going to have to travel next week. If Russellville loses and a Pikeville win, that will push Pikeville to the one. Raceland will be the two, and the Rams would stay home considering they continue out the final 24 minutes and win here tonight. Any winning combination of Russellville and Pikeville, Raceland travels next week to Pikeville for the state semis. But still a lot of football still to play here in this one. Let's take you through all the scoring of this football game as Raceland scored early and often in the first quarter. Our first play, our first score of the ball game finds Raceland going five plays, 44 yards, a minute 16. Noah Wallace goes in from three yards out with 9.43 to play in the opening frame. Rams in front, 7 0. Raceland answers quickly with one play, 64 yards as Logan Lundy hits Connor Hughes. Hughes makes the reception, pinballs off of three guys, and then breaks free at the 50 and scampers 64 yards to Paydirt. Rams lead at 13 0, 644 to play in the first quarter. Then the Rams get into the end zone again, a six play, 67 yard drive, two minutes, 38 seconds. This time it's Jules Farrell, seven yards on the ground, 19 0, our score after one quarter of play. The Mustangs answer with a seven yard touchdown strike from Jacob Bly to Jed Martin on a beautiful play in which Light came way right and then threw back over to the left in which Martin got free down the far sideline into the end zone. The Mustangs got on the board 19-7. They get an onside kick, take it deep down into Raceland territory, but the Rams' defense stands tall. We go back and forth a couple of series, and then Raceland right before the halftime period, six plays, 58 yards, two minutes, 18 seconds off the clock. 
Logan Lundy throws another touchdown pass as he hits Noah Wallace on a 24-yard reception. Wallace's first touchdown pass of the season that he receives, his longest of the season, and is 27-7 at the halftime period. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll check individual scoring and statistics, check some scores from round games in the area, and get you ready for the second half of action. Rams in the locker room in front by 20, and they get the football to start the second half. Our coverage continues on the Moroccan Legion Center's halftime show on the Quits My Town TV Sports Network. You know, funny. If your family loves carpet, Great American has carpets with lifetime stain warranty. Including pet urine stains. Really? Yeah, really. This carpet can take anything your family can dish out. Let us do a free estimate for you. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great America. America. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. If a natural disaster shows up at your doorstep, you can't just turn it away. That's why it's important to prepare for emergencies before they show up. Go to ready.gov plan to find the tools and tips you need and make a plan today. Hey Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. Twenty-seven to seven at the half. As we welcome you back in the Moroccan Collision Center's halftime show, James Carr, happy to have you along with us here tonight on a cold night in Ramland. Let's take a look at individual scoring and statistics in this, and we'll start first with the visiting Mustangs. One hundred thirty-three total yards of offense. They've snapped it thirty-five times, averaging three point eight per play. Sixty yards through the air, seventy-three on the ground. They've been flagged two times for ten yards. They've punted it away three times for 29.7 yards on an average. Had the football for nearly 16 minutes in the first half. Nine first downs, two of eight on third down conversions, 0 of two on fourth down tries. For the Rams, 251 yards of total offense, 180 through the air, 71 on the ground. They've been flagged four times for 35 yards, one punt for 41 yards. They've gotten four sacks against Bishop Brossard. Uh, that'll add to their 29 total coming into this ball game. They've had the football for only seven minutes and 15 seconds. One of two on third down conversions. They have not attempted a fourth down try. Jacob Light, five of 13 through the air, 60 yards and a touchdown. Jed Martin, 11 carries for 67 yards. Light, 11 for six. Sam Willicke, the longest reception of the ball game, one for 33 on a wounded duck on a ball that was just tossed up just before halftime, and he hauled it in. But nothing pays dividends for the Mustangs on the backside of that reception. Lundy, 7 of 9 for 180 yards, two touchdowns. Jules Farrell, four carries for 27 yards. Noah Wallace, four for 26. Both have a rushing touchdown in the ballgame. Connor Hughes, five catches for 142. And that's going to surpass his, his high for the season. I'll have to double check the total numbers. I'll drag the numbers out here in just a second. His touchdown reception that he had is his longest of the season. His previous was 45 yards against Fairview in the playoffs in week number one. Wallace and Newman each with a catch in the ballgame. Ben Taylor, Xander Jenkins, and Jules Farrell each with a sack, unofficially, of course, but uh, the Rams with four sacks in the first half of play, and they have really kept this Mustang team in check. Let's take a break when we return. We'll check scores from around games in the area. Big one over in Grayson tonight with East Carter in front of Mason County at the half. 
We'll check on that score as well as any updates from Pikeville and Williamsburg down in the uh, game down US 23 that has a lot to play out for next week. And if we can find a game, a score on Russellville and Newport Central Catholic, we'll pass that along. Out here in the real world, we've spent too much time waiting around and wondering if we'll ever get to be what we really want to be. Now it's time to move forward. And with a little help from Ashland Community and Technical College, you can finish that degree or start a whole new life as an IT VIP, a healthcare hero, and more. In less time and for less money than you think. The time is now. The place is here. Never underestimate you. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student-athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student-athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. It's happening. Now the SOMC Patient Portal app puts managing your health care right in your hands. You can request appointments with a simple touch of a screen, quickly and easily get a refill of your prescriptions, make online bill payments, direct message your SOMC provider. We feel in control of is your finances. At Ashland Credit Union, we give you the tools to be in control. Time show 27 to 7 recently leading Bishop Brossard here in the regional championship round for a chance at the state semifinals next Friday night. Uh, still to be determined. A score of interest. The top ranked RPI team of Russellville currently in a scoreless affair with Newport Central Catholic and a loss by Russellville and a win by Pikeville and Raceland will vault them forward one position, and the Rams with a win here tonight would play host to a team next week in the state semis. Still a lot of football to play. Pikeville is currently in front by 14 at the half against Williamsburg, down US 23 the way. So we'll try to keep all the scores up to date as we can moving along in Class Single A as we get those. A couple other scores to pass along in Class 2A. It's Middlesboro in front of West Carter, 19 to nothing as West Carter has only amassed 19 total yards of offense. On the other side, Middlesboro, 261. And they have their, they were 12-0 going into this ballgame and certainly are looking the part here tonight. At the half over in Grayson, East Carter leads Mason County by 20, 30-10. The Raiders trying to clinch their first ever regional championship. And, again, they have an opportunity with some help to host next week, but a win is probably going to put the Raiders on the road somewhere next week in the state semifinals if they can hold on over at home tonight. 27-7 our score here at the break. We'll take our final break when we return. Second half of action gets underway. The Rams get the football with a 20-point lead. Our coverage continues after this on the Morocco Collision Center's halftime show on the Coit's My Town TV Sports Network. Adults Pharmacy. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. Our customers are like family, and you've made us one of the fastest growing Erie insurance agencies in Kentucky. And for those of you who haven't tried us, come find out what you're missing. Let us help you make the right call. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Uh, 
seven to seven at the break. Racing in front of Bishop Brossard here in this regional round. James Carr, happy to have you along with us here tonight on a cold, cold night in Ramland. But this brown Bermuda grass has never looked better. And you know the thing is, is that Raceland spent the first six weeks on the road. Didn't play their first home game until September 24th. And we've been blessed in this area with very little rain around football games. And you can start to see a little bit of, of darkening in between the hash marks from the 30 to the 30. Uh, but for the most part, it's really not chewed up all that bad. Um, more toward the northwest end zone, which is closest to the baseball field, and that's where the Rams have really did a lot of their damage in the fourth quarter this season. Uh, Raceland will get the football to start the second half of play, and this is something that Raceland has done a, a fair job against teams. 90 points they've put up this season in the fourth quarter. On the season, Raceland totaling 451 points, 115 coming in in the first quarter, 160 in the second, 79 in the fourth. But they've been stingy, to say the least, coming out of the locker room. Of their total 148 that they've given up, they've only allowed 14 third-quarter points all season. That's 9.5% of the total coming out of the locker room. And that's certainly something that the Rams would like to continue to do here and push this one well out of reach and then wait their destiny, depending on what happens the rest of the evening here tonight. Belfry is up at Bell County, 21-6 early third quarter. That's uh, a another score of note. So we'll certainly see what plays out on that one. But uh, you look at a Belfry team coming into the playoffs at a 500 record, and I guarantee you they were one of the best 500 teams in the state of Kentucky. Real quickly, let's check some scores in college basketball. Final down at Rupp. UK starves off an upset-minded Ohio Bobcat team. They led by two at the half. They win going away 77-59. I'll talk about that game for maybe three seconds tomorrow morning on Let's Talk Sports on the Coyotes Sports Network. Join me tomorrow morning. If the Rams win, I'm going to drag Mike Sammons and somebody else out of the bed. We've done it every week for the last couple of weeks, and we'll continue to do it. We'll try to bring in some guys from East Carter as they win, and uh, that'll be put them in their first ever state semifinal matchup. And Tim Champlin, you don't find many much better than he is. He is a fine coach, and the job that he has done, and it, you look at the job that's going on between Mason County and East Carter. Both of those teams, when the coaches are there, took over, took over with two win seasons. Tim Champlin was just happy to find first downs and – finishing drives his first couple of seasons. They backed themselves into a playoff. They have won themselves into a playoff a couple of seasons ago, and here tonight they're, four, they're two quarters away from a chance at playing on the carpet two weeks from now down at Kroger Field. And, again, if some crazy things that happen over on the the Class uh, 4A or 3A, excuse me, bracket, number two and number three are playing each other tonight. Now, Cal – is the top team out of Louisville. And if they play Paducah Tillman, if Cal loses, East Carter's going to play host next week if they win. So how big would that be, an opportunity to possibly have two teams in the local area playing host to state semifinals? We've seen a state semifinal on this field once before, and the last time it happened, a goalpost went to the ground. That was the kick heard round or the Rams land as Luke Lee Masters, 37-yarder with ice in his veins, split the uprights and sent this place into pandemonium. So the Mustangs, t very tardy getting out onto the field to start the second half. And they uh, they missed the three-minute acclimation period. Sorry, guys, time to play some football. Your acclimation period was walking over from your locker room. So the Rams get the football to start the second half. And let's see if the Mustangs go for another onside kick. I think the Rams are certainly lined up, ready to go for it this time. They've got Brody Austin and Cam Bell right in between the hash mark standing on the Rams logo at midfield.
Christian Wall is also up on the, uh, the, the next line back. And Braden Wellman is up as well. So the Mustangs will kick from left to right as I view it. And Luke Piscatello puts it right in between the hashes at the 40. And I watched that happen last week with Ironton and Wheelersburg. They did that on every kickoff attempt. And this time Piscatello drops back and will try to send it deep. With the approach, he kicks at a low line drive right down the center. It's scooped up on the far sideline as Parker Fannin makes the re pick up and then loses some yardage as he's going to go well backward. But most importantly, he was able to reg regain control of the football. But the Rams will start deep to start the second half. Let's see where they're going to put him. I think at the 28-yard line is where it looks like the near side official standing. So 11.53 to go in the opening seconds of the second half. And the Rams start on their own 29-yard line. Lundy from the gun. Puts a man in motion from near side to far. They'll give it off to Noah Wallace. Wallace makes a man miss right down the middle of the field. He goes, lowers the shoulder pads at the 35, and pushes forward for a few more. Noah Wallace threatening to get himself over 1,000 yards on the season. Needed 90 exactly coming into the game. He picks this one out to the 38-yard line on a gain of nine. It'll be second down and a yard. Closer to the near side hash mark, two receivers and a tight end far side, one near side. Hand off Farrell. Farrell first down yardage and more as he's pushing the pile forward and gets out to the 44. A Johnson's chiropractic first down, number 12 in the ballgame for the Rams. 11-15 to go in the opening minute of play here in the second half. Rams leading 27-7. Twin set for Lundy from the gun. Near side hash mark. Farrell in his left pocket. Four hats across the line for the Mustangs. Play action. Brings it out to the near side. Newman. Newman makes the grab 45. Cuts back to the inside. Cuts his midfield. And is finally tackled there by Sam Willicke. But inside Mustangs territory down to the 48. Gain of eight on the play. Second down and two. Near side hash mark again for the Rams. They'll go two receivers each way. And this time, Lundy goes out wide and will go to a wildcat for Connor Hughes. He starts five yards deep. Four hats across the line for the Mustangs. Hughes keeps it himself, slips, goes right up the gut, makes a man miss, bounces off another man, spins across the 35, and gets down inside the 35 to the 33. Gain of 15, first and 10. A Johnson's chiropractic first down for the Rams as Connor Hughes his first carry of the night. And that was a nice job by Connor Hughes who slipped as he started his mo motion forward and was able to keep himself upright. Lundy from the gun, trips right, one left. They'll give it off to Farrell. No play action, Lundy. Pressure coming off the edge. Makes a man miss. Rolls off left side, and he doesn't get away this time as Thomas Sagers makes the stop. Loss of one back to the 34 in the first time that the Mustangs get to the Rams' signal caller tonight. And that's not something that has happened many times this season. That offensive line takes it personal when someone gets the mitts on the quarterback. So second down and 11, Rams behind the sticks. Double barrel shotgun look with Farrell and Wallace from the gun. Two receivers left, one right. Flip that, two receivers right, one left. Here's Wallace. Wallace makes a cut up the center, hits the B button across the 30 and down close to the 25. It'll be third down and short for the Rams. Down to the 26, that's a gain of eight. It'll be third down and three for the Rams. Rams one of two on third down conversions tonight. 
twin set. Lundy from the gun. Play clock starts to roll as he'll turn look toward Mike Sammons for the call. Newman and Wallace on the near side. Four hats for the Mustangs. Blitz coming. They'll give it off to Farrell. Farrell first down yardage and more. Makes a man miss. 20 and dives across the 15. Take him down to the 12-yard line. That's a gain of 14. Another Johnson's chiropractic first down. Eighth play of the drive coming up on this snap for the Rams. It started all the way back on their own 29-yard line. We've got eight and a half to go in the third. The Rams inside the orange zone leading 27-7. to Two receivers right, one left with a tight end right. Browning in the backfield. They'll give it off to Browning. Browning shifts right from the left side. Crosses the 10, the 9. He'll pick up three. It'll be second down and seven. So the Rams threatening here once again. And it, how big would it be for more points out of the locker room as Rams over 300 yards of total offense, 313 to be exact. Double barrel shotgun look for Lundy. He'll give it off to Farrell. Farrell right up the gut and can't get free this time as a nice stop up front by Caleb Lukes. Give him a gain of a yard. It'll be third down and eight. So third down and six. Rams in a twin set for Lundy. Lundy looks left, throws a dart, and that one's picked off. That's Jed Martin who makes the reception on the interception at the one-yard line, and a penalty marker flies on the back end. We've got laundry all over the field. And let's see what we get on the back end of it. Jed Martin jumped that pass. And let's see what happens at the end of this as it's returned back to the 30. So they'll get 15 more against the Rams on the back end of the re interception. So Lundy throws only a seventh pick of the season, but a big one here that was at the two-yard line and put 15 more on the end of it and push it out to the 45-yard line. So put him down at the 29 and then take it out 15 for the personal foul. I formation for the Mustangs. Handed off to Martin. Martin rolls off left tackle and crosses the 45 out to the 47. So the big interception on the turnover takes away points for the Rams. Martin gets three on the play, second down and seven. Right between the hashes, they'll give it off to the fullback. That's off to Evan Orth. Orth spins and dives forward out near midfield. 49-yard line, a gain of two, third and five. Orth's first carry of the night. So third down and five for the Mustangs. On the season, on the evening, excuse me, two out of eight on third down tries. Right on the uh, Raceland R logo in between the hash marks. The Mustangs 49-yard line is where the ball currently sits. 6.15 to go in the third. I formation. Light on third down. Turns, play action. Pressure coming off the edge. He steps up in the pocket, rolling out to the left, and he's going down, and finally the Rams get home. Cam Bell, Reese Winters, also Xander Jenkins, but the fifth sack of the night for the Rams pushes it back to the 44 and a loss of five. And that started because of Coe Conlon coming off the edge that forced him back that direction. Coe Conlon has been so big for this Rams team and a big stop there by the Rams defense. 
as Mayer will have to punt it away. Newman backs up inside his own 30. Mayer's fourth punt of the night, averaging just under 30 a kick. And penalty marker flies for a delay of game penalty. So back it up five more, makes it fourth down and 15. And let's Mr. Newman move forward just a tick. He'll stand now at the 25. He would love to get an opportunity to run underneath one. He has not had that opportunity very often this season. So we'll see if Mayer can get into another good one. He'll call for it, a good snap. Low line drive kick. It takes one bounce. Newman gets under this one. He looks at two white jerseys, makes a shift toward the inside of the field and falls forward to the 35. So good coverage downfield by the Mustangs as that keeps Newman from getting free. So Rayson will take over at its own 35-yard line with five minutes and a second to go in the third quarter, still leading 27-7. to And that's where that defense has been so stingy, to say the least. Here's a handoff as Noah Wallace makes the carry out to the 45 on a gain of five. Hard to see the numbers on the General Lee jerseys. That's what we need here, not that silly horn. Wallace now seven carries, 48 yards. He and Farrow both seven for 48 and a touchdown on the night. Wallace in the left pocket. Farrell's an H-back. Play action will come out deep looking for Connor Hughes, and he gets tangled up, and there's the flag. I love the fact that we got the penalty marker from the guy on the other side after the play was dead for two seconds. But he got a good 10 yards on the carry of his throw. I guarantee you that guy's got a – oh, now we're going to get a pair. He's got another one and another one. Oprah Winfrey's on the field. You get a flag. You get a flag. Wow. This one's going to take a march. So we're going to get pass interference on the near side. And we've got unsportsmanlike on probably Paul Wiggins on the far side. So we get unsportsmanlike on the defense, which they call that on the other side. So, so we'll get the penalty against them. And then... 15 on the pass interference. So make it first and 10 from the Brossard 30 yard line for the Rams. So a 30 yard penalty, and the Rams give it off to Connor Hughes on a sweep to the right. He's got blockers out in front, and the edge makes a spin shy of the 20. Needed one more cutback lane to find Paydirt, but a gain of nine down to the 21 yard line. Second down and one. Far side hash mark for the Rams. Wallace and Newman come near side. That's the wide side left. One high safety. Lundy from the gun inside of four minutes to play in the third. Rams looking for points. Here's Farrow. Farrow makes a man miss. He's out in open field, and he gets upended after he crosses the 10 down near the 5. And he's slow to come to his feet as they went low. They got him out at the knees when they went down, and we got an injury timeout for the Rams. Back in 60 seconds on the Quits My Town TV Sports Network. At SOMC, it's happening. Now our patient portal app lets you request appointments, get prescription refills, make online payments, and have safe and convenient virtual visits just about anywhere. SOMC, very good things are happening here. Hey, this is Joel Dooley with Vanity Cleaner of the Tri-State. Is your basement wet? Do you have mold in your crawl space? Have you had a flood inside your home? Do you have asbestos in your ceiling tiles? Give us a call for 24-7, 365 free inspection. 606-331-5001. It's not clean unless it's a Vanity Clean. Come to Great American and see the world's hardest floors. Kelly Bamboo has a 50-year warranty and is four times as hard as oak. Whether it's kids playing indoors or boys just being boys. So come on down to Great American and see the hardest floors on earth. 
Great price. Great service. Great, Great American. American. Hey, Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery off on his own accord. It'll be first down and goal from the sixth for the Rams. They're going to an I formation. Browning as the fullback. Wallace as the tailback. Lundy crawls up under center. Turns, pitches it out to Wallace. Wallace sweeping left. Cuts back inside and dives forward to the five. Nice job there by Caleb Lukes to read the uh, edge and not allow Wallace to cut back inside. It'll be second down and goal from the five. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Down by 20 are the Mustangs. Rams trying to answer this time after having it down inside the orange zone and throwing an interception on near the goal line. Lundy on second down. The give to Wallace. Wallace tries to bounce it to the outside, and he can't shed the tackle. Eli Tius make the stop, and it'll be third down and goal from the five. Raceland on the evening. Two for four on third down conversions. Let's see if Lundy goes to Newman. He's wide open with single coverage. Now they bring a man into the slot with Hughes on the near sideline. Lundy gives it off to Wallace. Wallace angles left, dives into the end zone, and he's in for six. Noah Wallace making house calls tonight. Touchdown, Rams. 33 to 7, 210 to go in the third, and the Rams with a big answer on third down. <laughs> Pete Nice and out for the extra point attempt as Wallace gets in the end zone for the third time tonight. Two on the ground, one through the air. Pete Nice and for the extra point, used to put it down. Kick is up, it splits the uprights, and is good. 34 to 7 Rams in front. Back for more after this on the Kowitz My Town TV Sports Network. Welcome to Ashland Credit Union. What brings you in today? I need help with getting my life in order. Okay, sure, I'd be happy to help. We believe that one part of your life you should always feel in control of is your finances. At Ashland Credit Union, we give you the tools to be in control. Come to Great American and see the world's hardest floors. Kelly Bamboo has a 50-year warranty and is four times as hard as oak. Whether it's kids playing indoors or boys just being boys. So come on down to Great American and see the hardest floors on earth. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great American. American. Hey, Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. Six plays, 65 yards, two minutes, 51 seconds off the clock. Noah Wallace rolls in for his second rushing touchdown of the night, his third on the evening as he's caught a touchdown, and the Rams lead this one 34-7. Fair, ca fair catch made on the near sideline at the 30-yard line. As Tyler Kreidenweiss makes the reception, easy for you to say. So Brosser takes over on their own 30, down by 34 to 7, 210 to go in the third quarter. And the Rams trying to do what they've done so well this season in the third quarter. And that's hold team scoreless. Raceland has only given up 14 third quarter points all season long. Brossard on first down. The give off to Martin. Martin dives off right guard. Tries to bounce it to the outside edge. A stiff arm. And it is ridden to the ground as Raceland Parker Gallion is the man who makes the stop. And he goes into the bench area, but Martin with a stiff arm inside the, close to the uh, the sideline, I should say, will get him out at the 39-yard line, but Gallion may be saving six there as he bounces to the outside. That one's, that one's to the house.
Two receivers each way, second down and one for the Mustangs. They'll give it off to Martin once again. Martin starts right, cuts back left, spins for the first down as he crosses the 40, and will move the sticks for another Bishop Brossard first down, their 10th of the ball game. Take him out to the 42-yard line, a gain of three. Inside of two minutes to play here in the third quarter, a plume of smoke looming over top of the end zone closer to the softball field. Here on a cold and partly cloudy night on a full moon Friday evening here in this regional round of the playoffs. Twin set now, light from the gun on first down. Four hats across the line. Rams bring the blitz up the inside. Willicky makes the grab at the 42, and he runs into a wall of orange jerseys. He had to see orange from every possible angle as the Rams gang tackle him. He'll pick up a gain of three, second down and seven. That's something Raceland has done a great job this season is just making those gang tackles. One player getting there and everybody else following. Middles Burrows extended its lead over West Carter. Now 27 to nothing, third quarter of play down in Middles Burrows. Second down and seven for the Mustangs. Twin set for light from the gun. Looks left, fires it out low, and that one's incomplete. Looking for Derek Martin. Cam Bell was in the area. It'll be third down and seven. Light 5 of 14 on the evening, 60 yards and a touchdown. Logan Lundy, 8 out of 11, 188, two touchdowns and an interception. And Lundy's highest game this season, 255. That was the game against Betsy Lane in which he threw for five and ran for two more. It's the most he's thrown since that game. Now check that. He threw for 217 in the opening playoff game against Fairview. So third down and seven. Light wants to throw it. Pressure coming off the edge. Here comes Cole Carmen, and he gets home. P.G. Clark Kent, he's in the house. His eighth sack of the season. Conlon with a great sim swim move off the edge and a sixth sack of the night for Conlon. Drives it all the way back to the 35 on a loss of 10. You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him all 145 pounds soaking wet. But Cole Conlon has gotten so close many times tonight, and he gets home with 25 seconds to go in the third. So now Jacob Light's going to go back a little gimpy as he walked back to try to punt this one away. Play clock's at zero. Landon Newman had to point it out. He's like, hey, guy, um, that clock's at zero. It's been there a couple times tonight. Throw the yellow flag. So back it up five more on the delay of game. So six seconds to go in. I would love to have a microphone right now on Landon Newman while he's having a conversation with the back judge of uh, who we have on the field. The game clock is at zero. Mike Sammons is saying, wait a minute, that's a penalty on them. You can't roll the clock. He winded the clock way too quick before they had everything set. Now, at the same side of things, it really is, it's, it's mood point because the fact of it is they can wind the clock and they don't have to snap it because the play clock is inside the game clock. So we've played three. We go to the fourth with the Rams leading 34-7. to seven. Punt coming up for the Mustangs on the other side of the break after this on the Kowitz My Town TV Sports Network. You know, financial security begins. Welcome to Ashland Credit Union. What brings you in today? I need help with getting my life in order. Okay, sure. I'd be happy to help. We believe that one part of your life you should always feel in control of is your finances. At Ashland Credit Union, we give you the tools to be in control. Come to Great American and see the world's hardest floors. Kelly Bamboo has a 50-year warranty and is four times as hard as oak. Whether it's kids playing indoors or boys just being boys. So come on down to Great American and see the hardest floors on earth. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great American. American. Hey, Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery.
in the ball game. And last check we had, Pikeville was leading Williamsburg. So if those two games play out, regardless of what happens here, the Rams are on the road next week to Pikeville. So fourth quarter underway as we'll start it with a punt from the Mustangs. Light sends this one skyward, and he sends it straight up in the air. Poison is what they'll yell on this one as it kicks at the 50. It'll tumble into Rams territory and be down at the 42. So, man, they'll back it up to the 41. So a 29-yard punt, no return. 11.50 to go in regulation. And the Rams do what the Rams have done so well this season. They pitch another shutout in the third quarter. They've given up seven so far in this ball game. And let's see if Raceland's offense can get back underway and take it to the end zone. Lundy from the gun gives it off to Jules Farrell. Farrell knifes his way off left tackle and is short of the 45. He'll get the 44 gain of three. Make it second down and seven for the Rams. 11.30 to go in the ballgame. Stay tuned with us after the contest. It's the Moroccan Collision Center's postgame show. We'll check all the scoring and stats from this one. We'll talk with head coach Mike Sammons and preview what looks to be next week's matchup if we know from there. Here's a ball swung out to the far sideline. That's Connor Hughes making the grab. Makes a man miss. He's got first down yardage and more as he's finally pushed out of bounds into the Mustangs' side of the field. Daniel Williamson drives him out, but... A nice job there by Connor Hughes as he continues to add to his career night. we got a penalty marker and a hold, and this one's coming back either way. They'll get a hold on Noah Wallace. So so we'll get a hold back at the 41. So the hold will nullify the first down and take it back 10 yards. So make it second down and 20 from the 31. Double barrel shotgun from Lundy on second down. He'll give it off to Wallace. Wallace knifes his way off right guard, and he's thrown to the turf as Jacob Light comes up and makes the stop. It'll be third down and long for the Rams. East Carter in front, 30-10 to 10 after three over Mason County. So make it third down and 18 after a gain of two. Pikeville hammering Williamsburg. It's now 50-14, to 14, two minutes and 30 seconds to go into third. It appears it's going to be a Rams and a Pikeville matchup next week down at Hambly. Lundy wants to throw. He's going across a deep post route looking for Parker Fannin across the middle, and it's incomplete. In coverage with Sam Willicke to be fourth down. So the Rams will have to punt this one away. Ten and a half to go in the ball game. Noah Wallace will punt it away tonight for only – the second time, his first punt of 41 yards. And standing back to return it is Martin. Wallace, a low driving kick as Martin backpedals and takes it at the 33, 34-yard line. Now, my question is, I did not see Martin <laughs> signal for a fair catch. Maybe he just yelled for it because that ball got to him quick. So we'll have it at their own 34-yard line. 33-yard kick, no return. And 10.25 to go in regulation. Twin set. Light from the gun. Martin in his right pocket. They'll give it off to Martin. Martin comes off the left side, and he was hammered. Xander Jenkins gets home. Cam Bell in on the stop, as is Ben Taylor. No gain on the play to be second down and 10. Starting to look a lot like what we saw last week against Paintsville. Just those body blows from the Rams 
really paying off big up front. And just no holes being opened up by that offensive line. Inside of 10 minutes to play in the ball game. And the Rams in front by 27. Trips left, one right. On second down, Light rolling out. Keeps it himself. Rolls off the edge and is upended. As flying in and taking out his feet was Noah Wallace. And a penalty marker flies at the end. So it's going to take him out to the 36, and then we're going to add 15 on this, it appears. No, unnecessary fit on the offense. I was going to say, if he says roughing the passer, I was going to say, wait a minute, he was a runner. So a gain of two, and then back at 15 up. So make it second down. Or third. Oh, it checked that. That was a dead ball foul. So make it third down and 23 from the 21-yard line. Light rolling out to the near side, surveying. Nothing there. Penalty marker flies. He's caught and slung to the ground again as Cole Conlon gets home one more time. But another flag against the Mustangs. This one will probably be negated. And now penalty marker flies again as Thomas Sayers just got in the face of the official and he got another marker. So it's back at the 14. They'll, ne they'll decline the hold if that's what it is, and then they'll put the 15 on it, and that's going to be half the distance to the goal. All right, so the sack recorded for a loss of seven back to the 14 as Cole Conlon picks up his second sack of the game. That's the seventh sack of the night. And then a personal foul backs it up half the distance to the goal, so it'll be at the seven and a timeout for the Mustangs. Back in 60 seconds on the Kowitz My Town TV Sports Network. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Central Catholic 14 to nothing. If those games play out as it is and the Rams finish this one out where it appears it's headed, the Rams will be on the road next Friday, Black Friday, down at Hambly for a trip to Kroger Field. So fourth down and forever. You need a set of binoculars to see the down and distance marker as Brossert will punt out of their own end zone. Good punt. It'll sky and hang as and then it checks up and comes backward and is down to the 25. So Piscatello gets it out of the end zone and hung it high to where nobody could get to it. But the bad side of it was it took the wrong bounce and checked up at the 25. So the Rams will start five yards outside the orange zone with 9.03 to go in the ball game, up 27 points. East Carter's added to its lead an 84-yard Charlie Terry rush, 38 to 10, early seconds into the fourth and final stanza over in Grayson. So East Carter appears 
It's about to go on to the state semifinals for the first time in program history. Here's Browning, goes through the middle, loses the football, and the turnover will be down at the 14-yard line as Browning just put that one on the turf. Had a great head of steam as he crossed the 20-yard line, got it to a, the 18, and he just fumbled it out of his hands forward. So Shadler comes away with it as they'll have it back at the 13-yard line. So 8.58 to go in the ballgame. Back to the defense go the Rams. We're starting field position for the Mustangs tonight. We'll sling it out to the far sideline. The grab is made there by Willicky in the slot. But uh, there is very little there as he tries to turn and cut upfield. And he'll lose a yard back to the 12. Raceland tonight has held Bishop Brosser to 132 total yards of offense. Raceland only giving up 202 on a season average total. Light wants to throw on second down. Pumps all kinds of time. Airs it out going deep. And Connor Hughes is going to run under it at midfield for the interception. Hughes angles left. Chased out of bounds and comes to a baseball slide as Connor Hughes hauls in his third pick of the year. Add to his career receiving of the night. This time on the defensive side of things as Hughes takes it at the 50. And where did he do the baseball slide and get out of bounds is the question. Looks like they're going to put him at the 35. So a 15-yard return. 8.06 to go in the ball game. And another turnover forced by the Rams defense. So 8.06 to go in regulation. Let's see if Lundy goes for the home run ball. Browning is back in the ball game. He starts in the left pocket, trips right, one left. They'll give it off to Browning. Browning lowers the shoulder, dives forward across the 35 and out to the 32. Gain of three on the play. Be second down and seven. Play clock continues to roll. We've got inside of eight minutes to go. In regulation, Rams in front, 34 to seven. Same formation for the Rams. Far side hash mark, Lundy. Newman boundary left. They'll give it off to Browning. Browning bounces off his offensive lineman as he rolled off the edge and bumped into Chase Carell and then surged forward after that. Across the 30. No, they're going to put him at the 30. The near side hat official, he was down a few, a few yards too far. So make it third and five for the Rams. Farrell and Browning in a double barrel shotgun look. Two receivers right. That's the wide side of the field. One left. That's Newman. They'll give it off to Farrell. Farrell sweeping to the right. Bounces it out. Makes a man miss. 30. He's got a nice block. He's down the sideline. Cuts back in at the 10. He's going to the house for six. Touchdown, Raceland. Jules Farrell. Jules Farrell takes it in from 30 yards out. As that is his longest rushing attempt of the season. His second touchdown of the night. 6.47 to go in the ballgame. 40-7. to seven. The Rams are in front. That was... As patient I have run I've seen out of Jules Farrell this season. As he just took his time allowing his blockers to get off the edges. And when he found the edge, he bounced it to the outside and sprinted to pay dirt. And that's nice to see out of him after he did not play last week. Extra point is good from Peyton Ison. 42-7 our score. Back for more after this on the Kowitz My Town TV Sports Network.
better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Lead this one 41 to 7 with 647 to go in the contest. The Rams are going to play on Black Friday. Turkey Day football for the Rams. They'll practice on Thursday. And now we've got the officials barking. Tom Collins is taking a long walk. I'm not certain what is going on. But the play is back underway as it's scooped up on the far sideline as Braden Keytron. Tom Collins is making the walk to the other side, and someone's about to get an escort. I got a feeling. So we got a face mask against the Rams. So, 15 more from the end of the run. Somebody's going to get an early night. So, we'll take it out to the 45. You can see Collins' march. He had a, he's got a, mark, a march of, of a, uh, a purpose as he's walking toward that other sideline. So first and, well, now they put it at the 44. Goodness gracious. High formation as light goes under center. That ball's fumbled. He will fall. Now the ball's still loose. Coe Conlon's fighting for it. And Conlon's got the football. Coe Conlon reaches in and comes away with the ball. So the Rams will take over at the 44 as Co Conlon adds to his stat sheet. So the Rams will have it first and 10, 6.35 to go in the ball game, leading 41 to 7. Lundy trips right, one left, Browning in his right pocket. Play action, Lundy. Good protection. Airing it out, looking for Parker Fannin. Fannin had it and got blown up after having the reception as Derek Martin lowered the boom. It was nearly re on a tipped ball after the hit was recovered by the Rams, but that was a big hit there by Derek Martin to spring it free to take away the big hit on first down. Parker jumped up high five, like good hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he should have done because that was a heck of a play by Derek Martin downfield. And that's what you like to see. Hard-nosed football, and they get up and say, hey, do that again. That's fun. Double-barrel shotgun look this time. They'll give it off to Farrell. Farrell right up the gut. Slips a tackle, 40, 35, diving forward to the 30, still driving the pile down to the 30. That's going to be a gain of 14 and a Johnson's chiropractic first down. And that's going to put Farrell very close to 100 yards on the evening. That pushes him over 100 now at 110 on 11 carries. That's the first time he's gone over 100 since back early in the regular season. Let's see. Let me dig back into the numbers here. That's going to be at Russell. 
when he went 112 on 19 totes. First and 10, handoff Browning, bounces it out to the right side, slips a tackle. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and he died for the end zone, but he's just a bit short. He'll be inside the 5. But Isaac Browning, the little engine that could, down at the four-yard line. Gain of 26. So first and down, first and goal from the four. I formation. And this a, a score here puts the clock in motion, the remaining 546. Browning at Farrell in the eye. They'll give it off to Farrell. Farrell bounces off a man right, comes back left, pushing the pile forward, and he's in for six, or is he down at the goal line? He's in. Touchdown, Rams. Jules Farrell gets in for the six. And the Rams lead this one 47-7 with 5.38 to go in the ball game, and that'll put the running clock in motion. And you want to talk about an effort that the Rams have put together here tonight. Raceland with 47 points, a seven points shy of the total number of points that Bishop Brossert had scored all season long, or had given up all season long, excuse me, 54 total. Ison's extra point splits the uprights, and it is 48 to 7 with 5:38 to go on a running clock here in the fourth and final stanza. I probably shot them all off, or maybe they're saving some for post game. There's going to be a little bit of celebrating going on here. Stay tuned with us at the end of the game for the Morocco Collision Center's post game show. We'll check all the scoring and stats in this one. We'll talk with head coach Mike Sammons if we can get him off the field and get him up here. But uh, this Rams football team, there was something special about this team about midway in the midway of the season, and the way they responded after the lone loss to Russell said a lot about this team. And they have really stood tall as one of the top teams in class single A. They've got 437 yards of total offense on the evening, and that puts them just shy of their season total high of 453 in the first game against Fairview earlier this year. So we'll run the clock the rest of the way. Peyton Eisen out for the extra or for the kickoff, excuse me. Good kickoff. Backs Martin back up to his 10. Brings it 15, 20. Slips a tackle, 25, and then dives forward out to the 30. So the Rams are going to tie the season high of wins of 25 that was last achieved back in 2008. So it's only the second time in program history that the Rams have won 12 games. It's the most in a season ever under Mike Sammons, who had had Three seasons at 11, this one being the third. He had his first season at 11 and 3 in 2014, went 10 and 3 and 10 and 5 and 16 and 17, respectively, backed it up with an 11 and 3 season in 18, and now we'll go to 12 and 1 here tonight. Here's a handoff as they'll give this one off to the fullback of Orth. And he dives out for a nice gain on first down for a gain of seven, maybe eight, once the officials decide where they want to put the football. They'll put it at 37, a gain of seven, second down and three. Four minutes on a running clock left to go in this one, 48-7 to seven Rams in control of this one here, and they've been in control from the word go. High formation, handoff Martin. Martin off left tackle and die, gets out near the 44-yard line. That'll be a first and ten. Gain of seven on the play. As they pick up their 11th first down on the evening, Martin now at 96 yards on 17 totes. Coming into the game averaging 106 per carry. Seventh best in class single A in rushing. But the Rams have really... Held this offense under control tonight. Only 83 yards of rushing that's given up. 
Here's Wright, roll, Light rolling out to the near side, and he gets met in the backfield, and he'll pick up a yard, and that's going to be it. So second down and nine after a gain of one. East Carter is your 2021 region champs. They've defeated Mason County 38-10. to Stop spoiling the Grayson party, Matt Sparks. There's a trophy. <laughs> Nobody pays attention to the stupid brackets anyways. It's a region championship for the Raiders. Here's a handoff Orth. He makes a nice carry off right side. Still breaking tackles. He springs forward across midfield, and he gets down to the Rams' 45-yard line. Tim Champlin, congratulations. Well-deserved honor, my friend. Middlesboro has defeated West Carter 33-6. The Comets season ends in the region championship. So the Brossard on first and ten. Light looks right, throws right, has his man there as he hooks up with Govan. And he threw a dart to Govan on the far sideline, closest to his bench. Give him a gain of six. Second down and four inside of two minutes to go on this one. So... Next week, the Rams will be on the road as they will meet up with Pikeville for a trip to Kroger Field. Belfry has defeated Bell County 41-20 in the region championship round. Here's Light rolling left. Now goes back right, steps up, and gets hit from behind as Landon Sammons gets the stop. Another sack for the Rams here this evening. They'll take him back to the 49 on a loss of nine. So Lyndon Sammons with 60 seconds to go in the ballgame, and this one should be our final play here this evening. So Bishop Brossert's going to suffer their first loss of the season. They're going to finish at a record of 12-1, and one, but what a uh, season that the Mustangs have had under eighth-year head coach Paul Wiggins. Light on first down or third down, excuse me, gives it off to Martin. Martin bounces it to the right side, nearly had the seam that he needed to break free to get the first down marker. So it'll be fourth down for the Mustangs. As they'll take him down to the... Where they're going to put him down to the 39. So a gain of nine on the play. 15 seconds to go, and Broster's not going to run another play. That's a class act right there, gentlemen. Classy move right there by Brossert. Hat tip to those gentlemen, and that right there is a direct reflection of the leadership of Paul Wiggins. So your final score here tonight, your Rams are your 2021 region champions in class single A. They'll play next Friday for a trip to Kroger Field. They're headed to Pikeville and a rematch with the Panthers, 48 to seven, your final score. The Morocco Collision Center's postgame shows up after this on the Coit's My Town TV Sports Network. Credit unions are small and can't compete with us big banks. Who are you calling? Um, I'm just trying to get through your bank's automated system to talk to a real person. Well, two can play at this game. Oh, I, uh, I think I have the wrong number. At Member's Choice, we are small enough that a real person will answer your call. Well, we are a very large and very busy organization. But large enough that you will be able to access your money through our technology and our global network of ATMs. Our adventures always start at Clark's Pump and Shop, your road trip headquarters. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? 
Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy, and so much more. If your family loves carpet, Great American has carpets with lifetime stain warranties. Including pet urine stains. Really? Yeah, really. This carpet can take anything your family can dish out. Let us do a free estimate for you. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great American. American. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. Our customers are like family, and you've made us one of the fastest growing Erie insurance agencies in Kentucky. And for those of you who haven't tried us, come find out what you're missing. Let us help you make the right call. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. The Rams, as they get their hardware at midfield, fireworks going off over on the softball field. They'll play next weekend down in Hambly against Pikeville for a trip to Kroger Field the following Friday High noon kickoff down at UK. A good one here this evening for the Rams as they allow only seven points in the winning effort. The fewest points the Rams have given away since allowing, they held Fairview scoreless in the first round of the playoffs. They gave up eight to Fairview in the regular season matchup. Six points they gave against Lincoln County and then gave up seven to Ashland to open up the regular season. But the Rams here tonight, stingy at best is the way to say this one as they out uh, gain Bishop Brossard 437 to 162. And uh, they did it from all facets of the game in this one. Let's take you back through all the scoring. The Rams get on the scoreboard three times in the first quarter. It started off with a three-yard run from Noah Wallace with 9.43 to play in the frame. Extra point is good, 7-0 Rams. Logan Lundy finds Connor Hughes on a one passing play, 64 yards to the house. Wallace makes the grab at the 50, pinballs off of three would-be tacklers and sprints the rest of the way, 13-0 after the extra point was blocked. Jules Farrells caps off of drive, seven yards to the house. He goes his first of two rushing touchdowns on – or three rushing touchdowns, excuse me, on the evening. 19-0, Rams lead it after one. Bishop Brossard gets back in it with a seven-yard touchdown strike from Jacob Light to Jed Martin. Extra point is good. 19-7 is your score. 10-25 to play in the opening half. Raceland re responds with a nice drive just before halftime. Logan Lundy finds Noah Wallace 24 yards wide open in the end zone. 27-7 our score at the break. The Rams get a score late in the third. Noah Wallace goes in from five yards out. 34-7 is our score. And the Rams, as they did in the first quarter, they score thrice in the fourth. Jules Farrell twice as they go in with 30 yards and four yards. 41-7 and then 48-7 as Peyton Ison's final extra point goes through. And the Rams are into the final four, the state semifinals once again with a meeting against Pikeville. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll take a look at individual scoring and statistics, and uh, we'll, again, preview the matchup next week. Raceland knows its fate. It's got to head on the road to Pikeville. They'll play on the turf next week for a trip to the carpet the following Friday at high noon for the Class Single A State Championship. We'll preview it and talk about it when we return after this on the Coit's My Town TV Sports Network. Hey, Rams fans, would you do anything to support your team? What about switching your checking account? With Ashland Credit Union's debit card, you can support your favorite team. Every time you make an eligible purchase with your debit card, Ashland Credit Union donates 10 cents on your behalf to the Senior Assistance Program. Sign up for your favorite team's debit card today at Ashland Credit Union. They're hey, this is Joel Dooley with Vanic Clean of the Tri-State. Is your basement wet? Do you have mold in your crawl space? Have you had a flood inside your home? Do you have asbestos in your ceiling tiles? Give us a call for 24-7, 365 free inspection. 606-331-5001. It's not clean unless it's a band of clean. Hey, Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. Welcome to Ashland Credit Union. What brings you in today? 
I need help with getting my life in order. Okay, sure, I'd be happy to help. We believe that one part of your life you should always feel in control of is your finances. At Ashland Credit Union, we give you the tools to be in control. song in a wintry fairyland. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy cozy are we. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you one will start first with the visitors on the scoreboard the Bishop Brossard Mustangs 162 total yards of offense 62 through the air 94 on the ground they were flagged eight times for 72 yards they turned it over twice an interception and a fumble six punts for 27 and 0.7 yards they returned, got one sack on the evening they had the football for 29 minutes and eight seconds 12 first downs two of 12 on third down conversions they did not convert a fourth down try in five attempts Raceland on the evening, 437 of total offense, 185 through the air, 252 on the ground. Seven penalties for 75 yards for the Rams. One interception, one fumble that was lost. They punted it twice for 37 yards on the average. Eight sacks tonight for the Rams, who came in with 29 on the season. They were ranked fifth in the class with the uh, total number of sacks. That number is certainly going to go up after tonight's performance of eight sacks they get to the quarterback. 22 first downs for the Rams, 4 of 7 on third down conversions. They did not have a fourth down attempt. Jacob Light, 8 of 18, 68 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Jed Martin, one yard shy of his season average of 106. He goes 18 carries for 105 but did not score. Evan Orth, two carries for 12. Logan Lundy, 9 for 14 through the air, 185, two touchdowns and a pick. Jules Farrell goes over 100 yards for the second time this season. 12 carries for 114, three touchdowns. Noah Wallace, 11 for 56. He added two. Isaac Browning, seven carries for 45. Connor used two for 24. Logan Lundy had three for 13. Use a career high, six catches for 139 yards and a touchdown. Noah Wallace, one for 24, his first receiving touchdown of the season. Landon Newman grabbed two for 22. The sack column looks like this. Unofficially, I've got Xander Jenkins with three, Ben Taylor with one, Cole Conlon with two, and Jules Farrell and Lyndon Simmons each with one. Regardless of how it divvies up, it's eight total tonight for the Rams defense who they'll head into the state semifinals next Friday night down to U.S. 23 to Pikeville with a trip to Kroger Field at high noon the following Friday on the line and a shot at a state championship. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll try to grab Mike Sammons. I have not seen him out on the field. We may have to extend it out just a bit, and that's not a problem here tonight as the final home game for the Rams is a victorious one as the Rams have defeated Bishop Brossard 48-7. The Morocco Legion Center's postgame show rolls on after this on the Coyotes My Town TV Sports Network. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now, you've got one-touch access to your account. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust.
Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 48-7, to seven, Rams victorious here tonight over Bishop Brossard. Coach Mike Sammons making his way up to the press box. And, of course, he's been stopped a few times along the way, everybody wanting to congratulate him. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll talk with Coach Sammons and get his thoughts here on the Morocco Collision Center's postgame show on the Coit's My Town TV Sports Network. Credit unions are small and can't compete with us big banks. Who are you calling? Um, I'm just trying to get through your bank's automated system to talk to a real person. Well, two can play at this game. Oh, I, uh, I think I have the wrong number. At Member's Choice, we are small enough that a real person will answer your call. Well, we are a very large and very busy organization. But large enough that you will be able to access your money through our technology and our global network of ATMs. Our adventures always start at Clark's Pump and Shop, your road trip headquarters. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. If your family loves carpet, Great American has carpets with lifetime stain warranty. Including pet urine stains. Really? Yeah, really. This carpet can take anything your family can dish out. Let us do a free estimate for you. Great prices. Great service. Great, Great America. America. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. Our customers are like family, and you've made us one of the fastest growing Erie insurance agencies in Kentucky. And for those of you who haven't tried us, come find out what you're missing. Let us help you make the right call. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. My Town TV Sports Network, James Carr now joined with racing head coach Mike Sammons. And coach, you, first thing you always like to do is you like to sit down and look at the stats and you start looking through some numbers. And first thing you went to is you went to Jules Farrell and you and I, we kind of kidded each other going before the game. You said, got to have a little bit out of that cat tonight. Well, you got a little more in a, a little bit. 114 yards. Second time he's gone for over 100 yards this season. Last time was back against Russell. That's been quite some time, but he showed up big in a big way. Yeah, um, you know, really proud of Jules. You know, we missed him last week and Noah kind of had to you know, I see tonight they kind of had split carries. And a week ago, you know, Noah had to get up around 20 carries when they had 23 between them tonight. So I think we're a much, much better football team when we're balanced as far as their touches and uh, given the, the amount of defense that Noah's playing. And plus, um, you know, Jules is contributing on defense tonight too. I know he had at least one sack tonight. So uh, proud of him. And, you know, I think he was disappointed last week that he couldn't go and um, really tried to get his body back in shape and get healthy. And uh, I think it showed tonight. So, you know, we're able to run the football. Um, you know, you got to be able to run the football this time of year if you want to try to, you know, try to advance. And, uh, you know, we obviously, you know, we're dominant at the line of scrimmage and able to run the ball. Before we go to the offense, let's talk about what your defense did tonight. Unofficial, I got you with eight sacks. Wow. And uh, a couple of those, especially there in the fourth quarter, big blows and one big one coming, Coe Conlon. He finally got loose and got his got his sack. He got home. But uh, several guys, Xander Jenkins, I have got him unofficially with three sacks tonight. Ben Taylor with a big sack off the line. But you guys were – you told me before the game that you wanted to find a way to try to keep this quarterback from beating you with his feet. And you guys did a good job of keeping him in the pocket contained and not allowing him to get free. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a big part of the game. Um, you know, early on, I, you know, I was a little a little frustrated with our lack of pressure. Uh, but, you know, it was our body blows. I think that's what happened, our body blows. Uh, we got a little tempo going on offense tonight, played some no huddle, and you could just see them kind of hunch over and struggle getting out of stance. And uh, even though we didn't convert there in the third quarter to open drive, I uh, still think it wore on them, and that's what happened. And uh, same thing flips around the other side of the ball. We talked about the number of kids they got going both ways. And um, so, you know, it ended up paying off for us. And uh, credit to our kids. You know, we keep working, uh, we try to work and develop our depth and uh, played a few more guys tonight than we'd been playing. Um, and so well, those guys, you never know when your number's going to be called. Those guys got ready and they got the opportunity tonight. And uh, obviously very proud of them and their ability to step up and make plays. Career night for tonight for Connor Hughes. Six catches, 139 yards, a touchdown. None bigger than the 64-yarder there on your second play, or second uh, touchdown. He makes the grab at the 50 pinballs, and then you give that kid any open space whatsoever, he's got breakaway speed, and we saw it there from the 50-yard line. Yeah, I mean, Connor epitomizes who we are. I mean, uh, he is racing football. He's – uh, you know, five foot nothing, 140 some pounds, and uh, you know he just goes wide open. And uh, so, uh, proud of Connor. His character really shows through, and it uh, shows through in his teammates. And uh, that stuff is contagious. Uh, it's contagious on the positive side. It's also contagious on the negative side. And we got really, really good team chemistry. Really, really strong brotherhood right now. And, um, you know, Connor's right there, one of those leaders, and he was able to step up night and make some big plays. And uh, he's a playmaker for us and has been. And, um, you know, last week he, I don't know really what his touch chart was a week ago. It was kind of, you know, we obviously ran the ball with Noah quite a bit. And then uh, tonight it was Connor. And uh, next Friday night maybe Parker Fannin. Or, you know, you just never know. Whoever steps up and whoever's number's called. And uh, proud of him tonight. And uh, really proud of Logan stepping in the pocket tonight and making some throws. And uh, didn't really run the ball as much tonight with Logan. Didn't have to. And, uh, so that was good. Good to keep him healthy, and uh, we'll move on and survive and try to get in seven days. Landon Newman, another guy that was big in the passing game, not on the offensive side, but what he did defensively. Four pass breakups in the first half, and he was going after a guy that he was giving up almost a foot on uh, covering downfield. But he did a good job of timing the ball at its highest point, knocking it down. Yeah, I mean, the Landon and Connor Warriors were essentially playing every snap both ways. Uh, just a couple guys who's completely sold out and bought into what we are trying to do. And, um, you know, when you're a football coach, you get guys that sell out to a cause that's greater than themselves. Uh, you can do special things. And uh, we're in the Final Four, that's special. Uh, we never want to take that for granted, and it's a great opportunity that lies before us. And uh, those guys are a big reason why. And so we got a group of guys that are really, really connected. And I think uh, they've been able to put the team first since the start. And uh, – I would think from sitting up here where you guys sit that that shows that they really pull for each other on the field. And if one guy scores, it's just as well as 10 others. So uh, Landon's one of those guys, and uh, very proud of him. Obviously, uh, we did some dogfight battle, jump ball drills this week, trying to get ready for uh, him and the big guy. Not only him, but our other guys got matched up with him on one-on-one -on -one go routes. And our guys were able to step up and, and you know, make plays and play through his hands and, uh, you know, didn't, didn't give up any big plays, at least in that part of the pass game. You know, we've had this conversation uh, once before, but uh, anytime you're playing, you're practicing football on Thursday, it makes the turkey taste of this a little bit better. But uh, you know what's on the line when you're playing on Thursday or practicing on Thursday and playing on Friday, a trip to Kroger Field setting on the other side of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's 14 days left in Class A football. Uh, we're blessed to get seven of them together. And so uh, we're extremely, extremely excited about that. Uh, I think our guys have, have been in the moment and just been where their feet are and uh, all throughout this process, and uh, they cherish every down together. So uh, that turkey will taste a little bit better on Thursday afternoon after we practice. It already tastes good. Yeah, yeah it'll <laughs> taste a little bit. It'll taste taste a little bit better on Thursday afternoon when you spend it with your loved ones. Uh, you know, it's a special special opportunity. You know, there's four teams practicing. It's, well, it's 24 teams across the state out of you know 200 plus that get that opportunity, and so uh, we feel fortunate. And uh, again, you want to be proud of that, and you want to. Uh, make sure that you understand the things that allow you to get to that pro that, that that you know that stage, and so um, just uh, very humbled by our guys and their experience, and, and you know the way they really compete. So you know, we'll go to the film room tonight, and uh, won't have turkey tonight. We'll have some Giovanni's pizza. We we'll enjoy some Giovanni's pizza, and uh, we'll see what we can do better from tonight. And then uh, we'll wake up in the morning, and we'll start getting ready for Pikeville. Well, we'll talk with you in the morning and uh, maybe a couple players on uh, Let's Talk Sports here on the Coit Sports Network, 9 o'clock in studio. Uh, we're going to bring you in. We'll have uh, Coach Tim Champlin in 
uh, in some capacity after the Raiders win a region championship over in Grayson. Great. You, you look at this, Coach, two teams here in the local area putting region championships in the back pocket. What's that say for pro, for the product coming out of Eastern Kentucky? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I heartfelt, you know, I don't know, John Central winning that. They did. Okay, so, you know, Coach Matney, um, you know, he, he always had this thing where he talked about mountain kids and how much – uh, how much pride that these people have, and uh, I don't know if we're in the mountains here in Greenham County, but maybe some foothills. But we're certainly in eastern Kentucky, and uh, so you know I think you have a lot of prideful communities and people that are vested in these communities. These are not de- you know people don't move up and down Highway 23. You, you throw an anchor down and that's home. Uh, and so I think when you see those type of people succeed, uh, it just means a little bit more. You know the, I always use the adage with our teammate, you know, homemade versus store-bought, and uh, these teams are homemade, and, uh, you know, there's always a little bit of movement and attrition here or there, but, you know, by by and large, those kids that lined up tonight for East Carter uh, played YFL and Grayson. The kids that lined up for us tonight, by and large, you know, they came up through our system, and so, you know, that's satisfying, and I think towns and communities can rally behind that, and um, I'm proud, proud, to, you know, Coach Champlin's a friend of mine, and uh, the program that that he took over is, is totally, you know, 180 from, from the position I was in. And so for what he's been able to do and overcome has been special. And uh, I guess you said West Carter came up short they tonight. They came up short tonight to Middlesboro. Yeah, I mean, a year ago, Coach Barker was there and what a great job he's done with that program. And, uh, you know, Coach Trimble and the other guys at Johnson Central filling in, uh, you know, has been special. Um, so uh, it means a lot. 16th region, two teams playing the Final Four. I don't know if we've had that. Uh, I know it's been some time. I don't know. It seems like maybe – Seven or eight years ago, maybe 2014, us and Russell was in the Final Four, something like that. I can't remember for sure. But, um, you know, does East Car get the opportunity to host next week? It uh, depends on what happened in front of them. So the, okay. the two and three teams played tonight, but Cal, Cal had to lose. They were playing Paducah Tillman. I haven't seen a score on that one. If that, if that would be a loss by – Cal, mm-hmm. then East Carter would get a chance to play at home next week. Yeah, so they got, you know, may have a chance. We had a chance tonight, too. It didn't work out, and that's okay. Uh, again, uh, I'm sure Coach Champlin tell you, just like I'll tell you, or any other coach, you can get on that be on the bus and go anywhere you can go across the Commonwealth if you're playing on Friday after Thanksgiving. So we feel fortunate. We're going to go to work and uh, keep, put, keep pounding and put our best foot forward. Coach, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Congratulations on a great win here tonight, and uh, we'll see you again as we get ready for uh, Thanksgiving Day football. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. That'll do it for us here tonight. A big thanks to the My Town TV crew on on site as well as the crew back at Michigan Control and Winchester Avenue at the Cool Hits Sports Network studios. Again, I'll be with you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, right here on the Cool Hits Sports Network for Let's Talk Sports. We'll have Coach Sammons and some players in studio. We'll also have Coach Tim Champlin and some capacity still waiting on a confirmation back from him. We're going to try to get him in studio with a couple players as well as we preview Final Four football between East Carter and whoever they will play. But Raceland knows its destiny. It's headed down US 23 next Friday night to Hamley Field and a matchup with Pikeville for a trip to Kroger Field on the line for the following Friday at high noon. Again, for everyone here at Raceland at Worthington High School, big thanks to all of them. Coach Mike Samus for pregame and postgame interview. The crew from My Town TV and the Coit Sports Network. I'm James Carr. You're saying goodnight from Raceland at Worthington High School as the Rams region champs with a 48-7 win over Bishop Brossard in the 2021 region championship game. Good night, everyone.